we're here for comic book shopping, our first ever international episode, and I'm here with Mysterio himself, Jake Gyllenhaal. What's going on? It's just the beginning of the absurd things I've done in my career. We can fly out of this scene. <laughs> <laughs> Cosmic him. energy flavor. Cosmic energy flavor. Love it. So we're here at Orbital Comics. We are very far from home, and we're here to promote Spider-Man Far From Home. Are you ready to do some comic book shopping? Totally. Let's get some comic books. All right. Spaghetti is decent with turkey gravy. Yes. No, not turkey gravy. That's disgusting. Turkey meat. Yeah. Turkey meat is not bad. Uh, it's a little conversation that I have with myself. What's wrong with turkey gravy? Well, you can't put it in, in, uh, in spaghetti. What? Turkey gravy and spaghetti. Oh, well, it, it depends on if you're saying gravy like an Italian person or gravy like oh, a oh, Thanksgiving oh, person. Oh, oh, oh. Italians don't say gravy. Weirdos say gravy. Italians say sauce. No, it's, uh, no, not, no, that's not, not, true. Not, that's not true. No, not true. That's not true. No, 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 no. My Italian no, no, family all calls that. it gravy, nope. yeah. <laughs> Sunday sauce. It's not gravy. It's not like some weirdo saying gravy. No, no, I got to tell that, you. Gravy's for turkey. Sauce is for pasta. It is a thing. You might not like the fact some people say gravy. But it's fucking gravy. Hey, you listen. Okay, you, here we go. You don't like the gravy. You don't, like don't the eat fucking, the fucking don't gravy. Don't eat the okay? fucking you gravy. Can eat listen, your sauce, listen my gravy. to the fucking girl. What, what do I do? Take it out, put it on top of my turkey. I take the sauce and yeah. I put it. When you go to the yeah. store, it doesn't say tomato gravy. No. Do it. But they don't get it. No. What country are it's we in? That's why. No, you, you, go, to the, you go to the store. You, you go to the fucking do, moron. You, you're the guy. You're the guy. You're, the guy. you're embarrassing us. Welcome to Tucci. Tucci.com, hosted by Yo, Christian. Tucci Talk! <laughs> All right. Why Tucci? Why? Why Tucci? Why? Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's enjoying Hello, a sir. great day here on. Uh, hey, the... Christian, it's me, Mark. <laughs> Hey, how you doing over there, Mark? Oh, I'm doing, yeah? <laughs> doing great. Just listening to the news, talking about my dog. Can no, I try? Talk? Try again. D try a different voice. Oh, you don't like that one? Why is that? Why is he Oscar He's, the Grouch? I don't he, know. He, he had a rough night. Yeah. He had a rough oh, night. oh. Can I ask you something? It's me, Mark Riley. Riley, can I ask you something? Sure. What do you got? I'm, well, I actually want to tell you something. Okay. Out of all the years I've known you, yeah. This. These are the shortest your fingernails I've ever had. <laughs> oh, I didn't think that you would notice. I clipped they them look last great. night. They look amazing. Oh, thank you they so look really much. Good. I'm really happy with yes. it. You sound like a you sound like a like a cartoon gangster from the thirties. Also the most amazing part of it is why is this chair shaking? <laughs> <laughs> That's this, his is body me. this is me, Mark Ryan. He's not even that handsy when he talks. He's just, <laughs> he's just shaking. He turn he turned into like a, a two thousand pound like uh, <laughs> There's an earthquake in the yeah. studio. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of cool stuff oh, going God. on today, ladies and gentlemen. Well, first of all, we've been talking about it all week. The episode of Comic Book Shopping with Jake Gyllenhaal dropped this morning. I watched it. Very good episode. Hey, I got to watch it today. It's really good, man, because uh, Coy Jandrew obviously knows his shit, but it's also the, the, the back and forth that he has with Gyllenhaal. Because Gyllenhaal doesn't try to pretend that he's a big comic book fan, but he but he's listening to Coy and even says to him at the end, he's like, look, talking to guys like you, this is where I do this stuff because you, you get you get more kind of inspiration from it. And, he, and it's so funny, my, my favorite comment in the whole thing, because at the end of the thing, they, Gyllenhaal hands the, the person the, the card and they they buy the comic books and his comments. You guys made him pay for his own comics. <laughs> <laughs> come on. It's television. It's like, come on. Uh, Spider Man. So last night, <laughs> I was laughing. There that's, was like 20 of them. That's so uh, Guys, good. like, Getty makes a lot of money, but buy his comics. It's like, it's like, come on. Do you think but about it? They don't know. It. They don't know. But come on. Uh, but they don't know. Really? It's TV magic. I, really? Otherwise, why would they write I guess it? So why, why would there be like 20 plus comments on they it? They don't know. It's, it's like, come Clearly. On. It was really funny. I, I, I laughed every time I saw it. <laughs> it's a great comment. Don't make Jill all buy his own comment. What are you going to make him? Come on. He's struggling for money. He's mysterious. Not only do you let him, you buy him, <laughs> then you give him some fucking sauce and gravy in the back. I didn't think it was a big deal, Christian. It's no. me, Mark Riley. <laughs> Look at me. Not a big fucking deal. Uh, uh, last uh, night on Jeopardy, they they played a clip of Spider-Man. Jeopardy. Is that girl still the champ? Or she no, lost quick? she's gone. Didn't yeah. she lose like right away? A guy named Josh won last night. Did her? not look like me. No. Did not talk like me either. Um, they they played a clip of Spider-Man Far From Home because they like plug movies in Jeopardy. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? They're like, this actor plays Spider-Man in the new Far From Home. And there was like, beep, Andrew Garfield. Beep, Tobey Maguire. And then the woman just goes, 
Ben Affleck? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> was That's all no right. yeah. None of them knew the answer. Nobody knew who That's Tom Holland was. I'm saying, like, we're in a yeah. bubble, guys. Yes. We're in a bubble. Yes. It's like there's not not everybody knows yeah, who Tom was, Holland is. Yeah, but if you're on Jeopardy, that, well, that's true. You should that's probably be in a, a movie. But I guess this is not like people on the street, right? I guess you're not going to pop culture. I mean, cause pop culture. Pop culture. Is a big thing. But here's the thing: thing right? that's the thing with Jeopardy is the gaps in knowledge with a lot of these things. Like the, the famous clip that goes around all the time yeah. is the NFL category from like six months ago when he went through five straight questions with five straight no buzzes. They didn't know a thing, and it was literally like, "What's the name of the person that runs with the ball?" Right. Running back. Like, they didn't Outfielder. get it. Outfielder. <laughs> Touchdown. Right. Nope, didn't get it. Uh, even Alex has, like, the best part of it. When he, when he the, la- the final question, because it goes easiest to hardest, the last question, he's like, if you get this, I will be shocked. And he asked the question, and nobody, nobody rang it. it. What no, was it? Like, I don't remember. Whatever Something about safety, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but uh, anyway, so that's, uh, I wanted to go, just go back. Make sure yeah. you check out Comic Book Shopping with Koi. And Jake Gyllenhaal, it's up on the channel right now. And, yeah. and Christian Rubicaba did a great job editing it. Frank directed it. The team really kicked ass over there. So it's it's it's, it's awesome. check it out. Go check it out. I'm gonna watch that after I watch the Women's World Cup game today because it's a big effing it's a big deal. Game. And the French are pissed. Oh, look who joined us. Hey, uh, Shaky <laughs> McGee. <laughs> Shaky McGee. Hi everyone. Yeah, you Jeez. missed me. Pl- I was playing you, and yeah. it was just moving your chair like you were yeah. talking. So when you talk, oh, was a ghost. do you want to hear Josh's vocal imitation of you? Oh God, no. <laughs> what is it? It was like, it's not hi, I'm Mark. <laughs> yeah. so, it's uh, you know very accurate. Do you know what that's from? I always use that because it's the Family Guy when Brian. It's early seasons when Brian goes to the one man play and he's like, "It's a one man show." He's like, "Hey, it's me, Marty. <laughs> like, talk to my grandma. Hey, hey Marty." Marty. And they right. all have the same, same voice. Yeah. Uh, so you were you were out because you were just you were, you were talking to our guests. I was just talking to the guests and is, they're going to be fun. Okay, but you like them awesome. better than us or something? I, I do so. actually. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Whatever. It's pretty cool. We have, have, have they have Sly Stallone stories. Do you? Well, listen. Oh, that's right. Do yeah. You do. <laughs> Devin Sawa and John Hertzfeld are coming in. They're, they're here to talk about Escape Plan, The Extractors, which is the third installment of the Escape Plan series. Sly is in it. And what's cool, and Riley and I were talking Ooh. about earlier, is that John Hurstfeld was actually in Cobra, right? Yeah. What the yeah, f- yeah, 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 yeah. So we're going to talk he about He has Cobra a lot of for sure. Sly stories. Yeah, wait, yeah, wait, yeah. wait. Is he the robber no, no, at the no, beginning? No, no, no. In the... Well, no, he's not the robber, but he's one, he's, he's one, of, the, he's one of the bad king, guys. King, he's not that king, guy. King. He's, not, uh, he's not pig. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think about it? Pig. pig. <laughs> yeah, is, is that I'm going to get, kill everybody. Pig. The most dramatic pulling down Ever. of a. And it was scary as hell. That oh, was like that a guy horror was movie. What's that? Have you never seen? He, he pulls down a pantyhose over, yeah, his, over face. his face. Oh. And his nose is squished. Yeah. He's like, and he, I thought you were Cobra? peeling. No, I thought you were peeling off your skin just there. I know. Which flipped right. me out. And it's just like, it's a new world, pig. <laughs> ding, ding. The best line. Not Find him. it, pig. No, you, it's not. First of all, oh. you would love Cobra. Really? It is a very, it's very crazy. fun it's like action a horror movie. What is it? Yeah. What is it? So when is it? His name is the best. 80s. His name is the best. It's Marion Cobretti, but which, is, which is amazing. Cobra. Cobra. And he has two pistols, and yeah. they both have and a he, Cobra and on he the goes, handle. I'm disease. Oh, no, it's yeah. the other way. I fucked it up already. <laughs> you got it. You're the disease. I'm the cure. Yeah. It's so good. He, it's so what good. a line. He, it's so good. The better line, though, is the beginning when the guy goes, I'm going to blow this place to bits. He goes, Good. I don't shop Stop here you. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. There's some classic uh, 1986 action lines yeah. from it for sure. But uh, Roxy, what it's basically about, he's just he's he's a rogue cop. I mean, he plays by his own rules. Stuff that would get you suspended in, uh, immediately yeah. from any any. I mean, especially with Twitter. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but he gets the uh, 80s. I know what I'm just saying now. <laughs> Nowadays. But he but he should get suspended back then for everything he does. He blows things up. He you know. He's, but there's a serial killer running around and Brigitte Nielsen. Is this model and she she escapes him, uh, and so Cobretti. This Reddy, is where they met. She too. escapes think, the serial killer. No, 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 no. They met on Rocky Four. Rocky Four. You're right. You're right. My bad. Um, yeah, she escapes the serial killer and then gets with uh, you know Cobra is, is protecting her the whole time, but there's people on the inside of the police force. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's so, a new world order. Twists and turns. There's nothing to do with this. Who is our? Oh, uh, uh, well, <laughs> well, 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 well he's like one of the bad guys. Oh. He's just he plays like one of the uh, like the you know part of the cult. Yeah, it's part yeah. of the cult. Yeah. But him and Stallone, I guess, met on that movie. Is that what happened? Uh, yeah, that's we'll this, talk about as it. the story goes. Yeah, we'll talk about pig. Uh, anyway, so that's going to be fun. That'll, that'll be at ten thirty. We'll get to talk to them. And another announcement that everybody should know: uh, good news, bad news. So for everybody, the bad news is that tomorrow's show is only an hour. Mm-hmm. It go- I know. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, ten to eleven. Yeah, yeah. The uh, good news is that we will be having a show now on Friday mm-hmm. uh, because we're gonna. The reason why it's gonna be an hour tomorrow is because we're gonna pre. Thank you so much, Mr. Manson. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna pre-tape an episode right after tomorrow's show, so that way we give you guys something to to listen to or watch on Friday. You guys didn't trust me. About what? You're gonna be on both shows. 
Yeah, no, what? Huh? No, then nobody's gonna be here on Friday. Yeah. I was. You gonna come in by yourself? I said I would. You wouldn't even be able to find the studio. Yes, I would. You would? Mm -hmm. They changed uh, the roads. You know what I did today? I took Coenk all the way. Hey, very proud that's of you. progress. It took me very long. Mm. I don't like it better. Will you try my route? But I'm too east for your route, I think. <laughs> You're not. Oh, You're I Beverly told you Hills. not no, I'm, to I'm take Coenk. No, I'm east Coenga. of Beverly Hills. I still think from what you do is so ridiculous. Where? What's a what's a cross street? What's a major I don't know cross street? Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Especially with the Instagram Wilson. comments you're getting. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Ridiculous. I don't get it. Frickin so can we can kind of you want to tell the story? Yeah. This is ridiculous. Yeah. This, yeah. Is really this is ridiculous. ridiculous. This is very very typical. I just I started can't. being. Do you, you sure you want to tell the story? Just should I sure. not? No, it's up to you. I just want to make sure. That you want to tell I think story. it's fine. All right, fine. I I've been fighting back more because I'm just so sick of humanity. Yeah, no, no, you, you. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to look at. The, no, no, no. She's just gonna, fighting back. Yeah, of course. Yeah, fight the power. Oh, yeah. It was like fighting remember when you yes. did the hand thing and then we yes. did that. That was, was that. So it's so weird. I posted a picture of me today that is me just sitting on the just couch. sitting on the couch with a pillow on my lap. Right. Uh, yeah. That's literally the whole picture. It's yeah. not it's even very like nice a picture. yeah. It's a fine picture. Nips, no nips, nothing. It's literally. A picture of Nipsey Russell. It's, on the back. This is, it's a. Oh, nice. It's just like a it's normal. Uh, yeah. look, can I just can I give you a compliment on that? Yeah. It kind of looks like you're advertising for like a Pier One Imports. Thank you yes. so much. Yes. Like my yes. my grandmother would have no issues right. with this. Yeah. picture. Yeah. She would have that framed above her mantle. This is my granddaughter Roxy. Exactly. She's lovely. She's not provocative at all. No, I not I at all. I don't think so. He's very nice. It's a lovely. I would show this to my bridge club. I really would. My bridge club has nine members now, and Roxy could join us. Ten we after this picture, I think. Amazing. Guys, he deleted it. So. Oh. But he said, why don't you move the pillow and show us the goods? Yeah. This guy I saw. said that. Well, can I defend this guy? Mm -hmm. What kind of jeans no. are you wearing? Are they like seven for all mankind? Right. Or, the, the, or, may, or the maybe, yeah, right. Pier no, one no, import. Right. right. The couch maybe he thought you had rings on underneath that he yeah. wanted to see the rings. But, or you had a copy of the DVD of the goods starring Jeremy Or Pilker. Or think about this. He's a creep. Yeah, that too. Uh, yeah, this would be that, the one no? person no. on the internet that was looking to, like, hey, what rings are you wearing? Yeah. So, anyway, so, so anyway, though, I usually, when somebody writes something like that, I'll click on their profile to see how sad and pathetic their effing lives right. are. And they're, so why they they're private, they have no pictures. Why they think you know. it's okay to write something like this that. This guy had like a thousand followers, Whoa. tons of friends, a girlfriend. I scrolled back for a very long time. They're in a very loving, committed relationship. I love my girlfriend. Happy anniversary. Picture Happy after picture. Picture after picture of, of him and the girlfriend. Drunk, maybe? Uh, maybe he was drunk. When he, not that it's, excuse. It's, it's, it was 9 a.m. Baby. And he's in, oh, he's in oh. Pennsylvania. He uh -oh. goes to Penn State. Uh -oh. Maybe he's in Europe. Sorry, <laughs> man. <laughs> maybe, he's, maybe, he's, maybe, he's in, maybe he's in Europe right now. I don't know. Uh, abroad? Semester abroad? No. But then I, I wrote back to him and I said, I see. I went to your profile. I see you have a girlfriend. I hope nobody ever treats her with the same disrespect that you treat and me. He deleted it. And then he deleted but the comments. Of course he did. You know, but, but, oh, no, what's, his, what's his profile well, name? Well, well, because everybody was going after uh, him well, on the comments. Yeah, like, well, good. What, you're at, least he, at least he didn't leave it up there. Like, you know, it's good for him. But it's just like, what? Why? Why would you write that? I don't know. It's it's like it's it. What I think it is a lot of the times is that it's you don't realize that the people that you're writing comedy, even like the 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 douche that calls in yesterday, right? It's like that they, they're human. You don't realize that people are humans that you're talking to. You think they're characters and everything, and it's like you you don't know people. You you, you see you see a clip, you see a picture, you think, oh, that's who that person is. So I can talk to them or write whatever I think but it is. But usually mm -hmm. those people, Christian, I find are lonely in a basement somewhere. Right. Like when you have a whole world and a loving <laughs> right. girlfriend and a family. Like there were pictures at holidays and whatever. Like why are you right. why are you like this? Yeah, maybe you know, stupid move. Yeah. You know, you deleted it. And it's a real and dong take. I on said that to Mark, I was like, part of me feels tempted to screenshot, the, screenshot it and just send it to his girlfriend, but yeah, I don't want to just... I'm glad you didn't. Yeah, and, I'm not and, going to, but I just yeah. want to be like, don't like, don't be this guy. Yeah. Well, there's other... Look, we, we had a conversation the other night with um, with one of our buddies. I, I don't I won't mention his name because I don't know if he wants to talk about it, but John he can come on. Cena. He can come on. Yeah, it wasn't John Cena, but he can come... He's, he's a, <laughs> one of our buddies, John Cena. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a critic. <laughs> And so he had, I mean, he was pretty open on public you know, Twitter about it. Oh. But yeah. so there was, he, he, you know, had a couple opinions on certain movies, whatever it was. And some, some guy, some guy writes him a, a, a scathing email. This is the same guy who wrote an email to like, uh, probably all of us, Me. plus Dan yeah. and uh, just a lot of people. And big block letters, threats and all this stuff too. But this was not the guy you wanted to do that to because he found, he, he right away, because once there was like a threat that crossed the line, Found out who he was. Found out uh, where he lived. Sent a message to his mother about it, though, too. And then the guy like 
freaked out and he's like panicking. He's like, I don't want the police to come to me. He said, well, you, you, but there's, there's consequences. But you did this. Yes. There are consequences to it. It's like, this is my point where there are people on the other side of the microphone. There are people on the, on the picture. Like, again, everyone is human. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone does certain things. But you also have to realize that just because you either watch somebody, listen to somebody, see pictures of somebody, doesn't mean that it gives you the right to just say whatever you want. Like, you can, you can comment and do it. But there are consequences also. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it, it's, it, but people don't, people don't always realize that i just want were people this bad 20 years ago and they just didn't have the outlet yeah, or yeah. has this yeah. made people worse mm. uh, i think column a column b yeah yeah a little bit yeah. of both i think column a column b i yeah. think that if if social media was around 40 years ago you would have seen the same type of stuff yep. it just brought it out of people totally it that's just, so yeah upsetting like okay for instance sorry for instance i was watching the like season two of parks and rec because a man is watching the go through great and season it's a great season but there is a scene where like tom haverford aka played by uh, aziz ansari and this is before aziz ansari's like whatever that was came out about him and there are some like pretty over the line stuff that i don't think you can get away with in a comedy right now oh. and that was only eight years ago nine years ago the beauty pageant episode yeah yeah, uh, it, it's every episode of Friends though with Joey. I oh, mean, yeah. it's oh. literally almost every single episode yeah. where you're like, uh oh, yeah, don't do that, <laughs> right. don't don't do that. Like, and that's the thing though too, because there's, there's there's two sides to that. Uh -oh. There's two sides to that also too, because there's I think there's part of it that we also have changed our the society has changed sense of humor, right? What's acceptable to say, what's not. There's also, and I think this is a definite no matter what. We're we are way too sensitive as a society in general. There's some things that are just not appropriate to say today, yesterday, uh, whatever it was. Yeah, 100%. For sure. But like we agree. There it is it is so sensitive right now. It's it's almost not fun to do some of this stuff anymore mm -hmm. too because it's like you crack a joke and like even like Kate the other day on Friday, her jokes were hysterical when she was talking about Tom Holland and Zendaya, Zendaya and um and even the even the the Carrie Fisher thing, right? Yeah. And it's like that's the comedian in her, but people people get offended by stuff immediately. Did they? I, I mean, I assume somebody did, and yeah. I'm sure that if it, if you clipped that out, then she would get shit for it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's just like everybody is. It's just there's there's just too. I don't know. There's just it, everybody's looking to get up in arms or fight about something. Totally, it just feels like that, and take somebody down. It just feels like it feels like they every, say every this, other day. They're coming at you and they want to just bring you and did the F down as much as possible. Let me ask you a question. This happened to me this morning on my drive here. Okay. So I take a back. This morning. This morning. So I take <laughs> this little back route to avoid Franklin when and I go around the Yamashiro or whatever. Yeah, of course. I know exactly where you Correct. Mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Frank. <laughs> it's a great, great route. So heading west, you get down to this light by the Hollywood Bowl, and you have to take a left. And there's always people that are coming up to take a left. And so, you know, at the left light, if there's no turning light, it's two people go through. Right? That's like the LA. That's a law. That is a, a driving law. The third car going through was a public works truck, yellow. They are not by any means police officers or even parking enforcement. And I'm pulling out, and the dude just rips around me, and I just laid on my horn, and I had my window rolled down, and he goes, fuck you, bitch, I'll fucking kill you. And I was like, well, first of all, I'd like to call public works, because that that's, I don't know if what you guys think in that situation, but I, I don't want to yeah. be the, like, the mom that's going to be like, wow, my kid got bullied at school, so that kid deserves to be expelled. But I also don't want some public works guy who's got clear road rage calling me a fucking bitch, and he's going to fucking kill me. Right. So... Yeah. It's so aggressive and underratedly aggressive in the society to say you're going to kill somebody. Yeah. Like, that's a not. Threat. Th I mean, <laughs> it's a that is not an okay yeah. thing to yeah. say to anybody. Totally. I have never said that to anyone in my entire life. I'm sure you said it in passing and joking. I'm like, going to kill you. Oh, I guess maybe. Right. Like, but, not, but, oh, not, but not meaning, like, uh, not aggressive. Yes. I, I don't think I've ever said it to somebody. Right. Like, maybe I'm like. Oh my god! I feel like killing them right yeah. now. But I mean, I, we're, I all, we're I all guilty of, of well, maybe road rage, road rage for sure. Right? But yeah. Way, but because I remember my favorite one. I'm gonna kill lean you. Back, no, 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 if he no. leaned back on his horn, I'd be like, all right. So he leaned back. And, I'm gonna kill you. You know, you yeah. gotta be. Big you should also be more creative in it too, because the one that I'm most proud of myself to, even though I'm not proud of the road rage moment itself, but of what I said, um, I was driving. I was, I was driving towards the highway, and this guy. Just pulls over. Doesn't have his. Doesn't have his his uh, blinker on. His yeah. blinker on. And I'm and I saw. So I roll down the window because he cut me off. And then he put it. Didn't, didn't put the blinker on. So I roll up next to him and I go, Hey, hey. He's yeah. I go. Your blinker's broken. 
And he goes, oh, is it? I go, yeah! And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> and drove off. Like, because I was trying to like tell him nicely. Yeah. That, well, not nicely, <laughs> condescending. You're trying like, to oh, blink- you're still being helpful. I was like, your blinker's broken. Well, it's not broken. He just didn't use it. Yes. And I was saying, I was being oh, a dick. And I, I was like, I, I was like, your blinker's broken, a- a.k.a. How do you know it's not broken? Because it was a move to yeah. where he didn't give a shit about yeah, his blinker. He was, and I was like, "Your blinker." Come on, on. Like, but he was came back like, "Is it?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And he just, it was, it was a funny moment. I'm sure you had a lot of those. Oh yeah. yeah. I ratted mm-hmm. somebody out, a public uh, worker, the other you? day. No, yeah. you What'd you do? Instagram post? No, no. I no. felt bad about it too because like this is a person's job, and I yeah. and I bet they probably ended up losing it. But Uh-oh. he was, it was at the Spider-Man premiere, uh, and he was wanding women. Oh no. Um, and he, the woman that was in front of me was wearing a very tight dress mm. and he just was wanting her and he said I don't even need to wand you right now this dress is so tight I can oh, see no. everything oh, underneath no, no, mm, no. baby mm. and then it was like That's she was she's offense. like this she's yeah. so uncomfortable Oof. and on his and, Instagram had a lot of pictures with his wife and stuff too, I'm yeah. sure yeah. probably uh, mm-hmm. and so then I, I'm like up next and I'm like flipping. oh no oh god like just so uncomfortable and he was like you guys see that dress on that girl oh, mm. no. and like wouldn't stop and I just was like I have to say something to somebody he can't just yeah. be these are big, big celebrities yeah. coming through too. She had, wasn't somebody I recognize. Could, could be, and even if they're not, even if you're, uh, Who cares? it doesn't it's matter. Right. I'm just saying somebody's gonna like right. sue oh, this guy gosh. or something. Speaking of catcalling, I tagged you in the Twitter post. I may have tagged you, but I don't know. Yeah, you tagged you all of us about this, I watched the Skylar it. Stone. Did you see that? No, oh. on Hollywood Boulevard. I tagged you in the tweet on no, Sunday. No, no, no. Um, he's walking with his daughter. Oh yes, yes, yes. Did you yes, see yes, that? Yes, yes. No, what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't. I I forgot to tag Cody and Alex because I should have. But we can watch it in the eleven o'clock hour. I can pull it up because we're. I can pull it and put it in there. So it was yeah. a YouTuber. The guy who calls himself King Aladdin. King Aladdin. Yeah. Uh, and he was on. He was on Hollywood Boulevard. So and, he's, he, and he live streams everything. That's he's what like he does. He's, got, he's, got he's got millions of views. So there's. It starts off and he's and he's screaming at this girl and he's like, oh, the you, YouTubers. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, he's like, you Taylor Swift looking young bitch or whatever he calls her. Yeah, come on back here, bitch. Taylor. So looking big. The guy yeah. with the millions of views. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. So and, and he's streaming it himself. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's calling yes. after and he's and yeah. he's and what? It's a bad dude. But so what happens? Not a good dude. So what happens after that is that then this guy comes in and he and he goes. He's like, "What are you doing, man? What are you yelling at? What are you yelling at this girl? She's 15 years old. What are you doing?" And he and he and first he's like, "Oh, well, she's 15. Why is she out here? Why is she out here by herself? She's 15." He goes, "Cause it's my my night out with my daughter, man." He's like, "I'm yeah. taking her out." And then yeah. he's a comedian, this guy, right? The Skylar Stone. Skylar Stone. He's, a, he's a good dude. And he and so, but and Skylar he said Stone's it, the dad. Yes. And he said it in his tweet too. He's like, "Had I not, I, I knew he was filming." He's like, "Had not, then he probably I wouldn't have his teeth." Him. Yeah, yeah. Of course. And, and he's like, "Right." So he, right away, the the YouTube guy just kind of shuts. Down. He's like, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. And then obviously, once he walks away, then he starts getting big again. And he's like, he's like Yeah, he starts. Who's he hanging out with a 15 year old girl weird. for? He already said. It's his daughter. It's his daughter. It's hanging. And he came it's, back. Yeah. Then he came back. And told like, him You're to in my the world. Fuck yeah, yeah, he yeah, yeah. He's like, You walked into my world. Yeah. yeah. I love and that I love that line. Yeah, it's good. He's, yeah, he's just like, Wow, he, that's disgusting. Was totally. Yeah. Was that's I mean, the dude is he's just a disgusting dude. He's, I mean, he's the classic millennial trash. He's It'd be one thing if somebody else caught him doing that in life, but for him to think that. That's how you can treat people right. and be so confident in that. He's live streaming himself because he's playing because he's playing to his audience and he's playing to the audience. That, but that's a problem for the toxicity yeah. of that situation. It, ew. Yeah. Yes, yeah. because ew. you know that there's although although he did say Skyler said that he was surprised with how uh, much support yeah, he totally. got because normally I'm not. You, you're not surprised. No, no. What I'm saying is surprised with Skyler got support. Of course. No, no, no. Of course he's going to get support. He, he means the majority of support because you know that he's because like I said, this guy's got, got millions of yeah. supporters yeah, that you would think McDush. maybe yeah the other the other side of it would be like oh you shouldn't have your daughter but he didn't get a lot of that stuff. But who knows? Skyler Stone you know, you know is the dopest doesn't work? name. That curtain that over the light. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. But it looks off the side. Yeah. Well, Josh and yeah. I wanted to cut a hole. Through it? In the circle. It's yeah, a hole in the curtain. It's an interesting look that we yeah. get going on but here. You guys, yeah, it's, well, it's, mm, no, it's, it's not, not working. working. No. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to make it positive. I appreciate yeah, well, that. Uh, no. Is that supposed to be the same thing? No. No. It's on all the time. Oh. That, and that's you know where these lights on the floor are from? Where? The Josh McCougar show set from oh, back in the day. Oh, yeah. good. I you donated them. You yeah, donated, donated them to the cause. Yeah, because I, I, I don't. We don't light the curtains on the show anymore. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, look. That's we're gonna, really sweet. It's very nice. I donated something to your cause one time. What? A tripod. Oh, that's right. You did for years. Yeah. We're gonna go to break uh, <laughs> because when we get back, Devin Sawa and John Hartsfeld will be in, and they're gonna be talking about Escape Plan, the Extractors, which is coming out today, digital and streaming. We'll talk to him right after the break.
Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. You looking for a Star Wars fix? Well, Rule of Two is that show. It drops on Collider Video's main YouTube channel, as well as on Podcast One's Jedi Council feed. So go over there, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. We talk everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of deep dives and a lot of conversations that go all in. You know what to do. Subscribe, join us there, and rise. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Mailbag. A new episode drops every Saturday and Sunday in your face and in your ears, answering the questions from you fans about the world of entertainment, film, and television. Me and great guests from our sphere do the best to answer your questions from Twitter, from Instagram, and of course, email as well, every Saturday and Sunday. Hi, I'm Koi Jandro, host of Collider Heroes, and I'm here to tell you we've got 20-minute episodes coming at you on Collider Video, on the YouTube, as you've always loved it. Plus, now we've got hour-long podcast dropping every Thursday, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast because it's going to get even more sweaty on the podcast. Plus, every week we're going to try to get some very special guest interviews, all of the people that help shape these movies and TV shows you love. So, video, podcast, interviews all coming at you. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Stay sweaty. Hey guys, Perry Nemirov here to let you know that The Witching Hour is all over Collider right now. You can listen to that horror film podcast with myself, with Haley Fouch. We talk about witchiness, we talk about slashers, we talk about space horror, you name it, all on that show on the Collider Factory feed. We also have clips on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. And on top of that, you can find an article all about Witching Hour every single Tuesday on Collider.com. Check it out, get scared. Hopefully you survive the witching hour. What's up Collider fans? Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com where you can find the top stories throughout the week in the world of professional wrestling. If you're a wrestling fan like myself, then you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not checking out all the shows we do every week on YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. In particular, on Wednesdays, we've got a SmackDown recap show hosted by John Roca and myself where we pick apart and, and talk about every little thing that happened on the Blue Brand. So do yourself a favor and go subscribe at youtube.com slash C slash wrestling sheet. Hey guys, Perry here to let you know about the new edition of Collider Movie Talk. We are going to five days a week. We have a short, sweet 20 minute show where we focus on the two biggest stories of the day. You can expect to see all of your favorite Collider personalities on the show, including Jeff Snyder, John Roca, Haley Fouch. You're getting Josh McCuga every Friday. We're gonna have a blast. It's gonna be informative, fun. Come join us. 3 p.m. PT live every single day of the week right here on the Collider Video YouTube channel. You can also find the show on the Collider Movie Talk feed on our podcast network. So go watch, go listen, however you prefer to get all of your movie news. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Sports Time. Well, you know, if you've been watching us every week, you know we break down the latest and the greatest in the world of sports, talk about the big issues, the big games, all of it with a rotating band of guests like Matt Nose and Josh McCuga. We've had Taylor Bashotti on. We've had so many great guests. Now, if you want to see more of Sports Time or you want to try it out for the first time, remember to subscribe to Collider Sports YouTube channel. And if you want to take us along with you in your ears, you can go and subscribe to the Collider Sports podcast feed for all the sports goodness. Hey guys, it's Riley here. Let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. You know it, right? It drops every Thursday on Collider Conversations, and I have guests from all across the space. John Roca, Gray Drake, Alexander Desplat came on at one point. We talk everything from movies, we talk about life, and everything in between. What do you want to hear? What do you want to talk about? It's the Riley Roundtable every Thursday on Collider Conversations. You get it there. Hello, how are you guys doing? I'm Christian Harloff. I'm the host of Collider Jedi Council. We talk about everything Star Wars. And if you want to catch our weekly show where we talk about the latest and greatest in Star Wars, it's movie news, it's canon, it's all of it. We take questions from you guys. How do you do it? Main channel, that's right, right here. Subscribe to this channel and you can listen, you can watch, you can do all of it. But if you want to just listen to it, you got the podcast feed too. Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever it is, you can listen to it in your car. Do all of it. It's Star Wars. Episode 9 is coming out. And then after episode you got TV shows, so we're going to be your sports center for Star Wars. Do it. Come on. Be real. We're back here, ladies and gentlemen, on Collider Live. And joining us in studio from the brand new movie, Escape Plan, The Extractors, which comes out today, digital and streaming. The star of said film, Devin Sawa, and director John Hersfeld joins us here today. Gentlemen, how are you? 
How you guys doing? Good to have Fine. you. Thanks for having us. You yeah. know, John, right before we started here, before we get into the movie, uh, McCoog and I were talking about one of our favorite movies of all time here, the old action uh, thriller horror movie, I would say, too, is Cobra. Cobra. And you were telling me a great story in the fact that Sly, he kills you, sets you on fire, <laughs> and he kills your son. No, not in, not in Cobra. Oh, in Co- oh, I thought in Cobra. He, no, no. In Cobra, he killed me. He kills you, but in this, no, I'm in saying this movie. In Escape Plan, he, The right, Extractors, right, right. Uh, he basically puts a rod through my son's head. He <laughs> plays a very small role as a bad guy. That was your son? Yeah. Oh, my yes. God, that moment. <laughs> That's my son, you know, and how it happened was, yeah. Yeah, my son had a little role in, in, the, in the script. He just shoots him. Yeah. So Sly, who's like my son's godfather, says, he sees a rod on the metal rod, and he goes, pick it up, and he goes, forget that. I got an idea. Let's really give you a killing. And so he came up with that idea. That was completely his, oh, his idea. That's amazing. And, yeah. uh, and he even, in a sense, directed. He knows my son, he's, and he's going, Squeak, when my son yells the F word, you, yeah. you know, that's all you got. And he's going, that's all you got. <laughs> Come on. So... That's awesome. That's well, how, and how did you guys meet? Did you meet on Cobra, or did you meet before that? Sly and I. Yeah, yeah. I met Sly in 1967. Oh wow! I met wow. Sly. Wow, uh, yeah. that's that's real old school. That's, that's right before. That's before. I he met popped, him when, man. I, when I was yeah. 18. Damn, awesome. He's a couple of years older. He had come from uh, uh, Miami Dade and another college before that, and we both transferred to the University of Miami. And uh, came in middle of the you know year, and we didn't know anybody. I didn't know anybody, and it's, just, it's, it's funny seeing them on set together. They yeah. become teenagers. They they <laughs> bicker with each other. They fight. It's it's yeah. really it's really quite interesting to see. Yeah, and Devin, so t- talk a little bit about how you got involved in this movie here too, because and you play you're essentially Vincent D'Onofrio's son. Yeah, uh, in the, in this film, you're like the main you're, you're the main villain here. Yeah, I, I I campaigned hard for this when I heard there was they were looking for a villain role. Uh, I you know I got my agent on I got my manager on it and they set up a meeting with John and I and we we sat at a table and, and uh, I had to really sell myself as a villain because I'd never been a villain yeah. before in anything um, and so we just talked and and uh, somehow at the end of it he was convinced because uh, I got the offer and, and away we went yeah well the good thing about this this particular villain though too is it's it's not like a black and white villain because he's he's got a struggle there's some there's, yeah. there's a lot to him so I mean that that's got to give you as an actor like a, a, more meat to play with you yeah know? that's something we talked about a little bit we didn't want to make it in this 80s, uh, you know, Hans Gruber right. type. Mustache uh, twirling. Exactly. What's wrong with Hans Gruber? Hans Gruber, <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, Hans, Hans Gruber and, and yeah. also, uh, uh, what's his name from the uh, from the professional? Um, um, oh, Leon. Leon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. With a bad guy. Oh, uh, oh uh, Gary Oldman. Uh, Gary Oldman. Oh, yeah. Everyone. Everyone. Exactly. Yeah. He did it. He did it well. Yeah, sure. uh, I, you know, uh, no one's going to do that again. Right. So we didn't want to be that guy. And, st- and, and Sly actually gave me that note, too. Uh, you know, when we first met, it was like, Keep them leveled. Keep them real. You're the good guy. Yeah. Just think that. Let's go into that way. Right. Because that's what always. That's the whole point. Is that every the best villains don't think that they're villains. They yeah. They think that they have the right plan. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, and I was, me every day. The whole yeah. time I was just working for my own spinoff. You know. I was just trying <laughs> to. Right. Just like, I'm going to do this so well that's that right. they're going to write four movies just about yeah. my guy. I prequels. Like prequels. Yeah. And, and, I'm, yes. and I'm going to jump back and forth to this too because yeah. if you're friends since '67 with Sly, there's got to be conversations about Cobra too. He's making all the Rambo movies. He's making Rocky and Creed. To do it. He does? He wants to do Cobra as a series. Oh my God. As, oh! as, 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 <laughs> as, a, as a television series? He wants to do Cobra as a series. Oh, oh yeah, please. he's wanted to do that for a while. He's very passionate. Yeah, man. So is, that, <sighs> is there any movement on that? Is there any. I don't know. I yeah. know he wants to do it. I don't know where he's at with it. Okay. But, but he is. Uh, uh, he's doing a big production company. He's developing a lot of yeah. projects. Balboa he's, films. He's, he's developing yeah. his. The passion of his life, yeah. too, the story of Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, wow, that's great. I mean, Sly knows everything about Poe. Yeah, he was really, such a bright character, he, too, he, Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, like, he's so yeah. darker than Darker yeah. than But, you know, Sly yeah. has that. He, yeah. he can access the darkness with okay. him for sure. pretty easily. Yeah. He wanted to turn Rambo into a TV show, too, didn't he? Wasn't there talk about that at some point? No? That I don't know about. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I maybe don't it was know. just Cobra. Yeah. All, I, we need, all we need is Cobra, and yeah, no, maybe over the top. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Get that hat. Well, we, we talked about it the other day. We said this, and some people d- disputed me on it. But this is cheating. Yeah. But but they said no. You can you can do it because he did that. That's the move that he does not over the top. Yeah. He, he yeah. does. He yeah. does the, yeah. There was this uh, a Twitter account posted this picture of the slide like action figure from the seventy yeah. from the eighties yeah. from over the top, and it didn't have the hat with the action figure, which is, that doesn't right. even make sense. That's like having Luke Skywalker without a lightsaber. You guys are still harping on that. Okay. It's fine. 
take <laughs> off their hats sometimes. Yeah. Not in that movie. Yeah, yeah, but but getting back to Escape Plan, had you ever had you met Sly before? Had you worked with him before? At all? No. And so this was, so he's an icon walking into the room. Yeah. And well, the first time I, I I was he hadn't arrived yet, so we'd shot like four or five days before he had yeah. arrived, and I'd heard him on speakerphone talking to him, and you could just hear that iconic voice, you know, talking in the background. And I just that was the first time I was like, oh my god, that's this awesome, is Sly. And then I had really had to work on putting that all this like, because this is a guy, especially my age, you know, I was you know eight, nine, ten, eleven, yeah, yeah. twelve, when all the all those movies came out. Yeah. Um, so I really had to focus on not thinking of them that way, so that I wouldn't mess up the takes, and you know, I had to you know look at them as a peer and as a. A, well, you gotta kidnap actor. his girlfriend. So. <laughs> <laughs> kidnap his girlfriend. Well, he, we did this big fight scene where he's yeah. got me in headlock, and he kept uh, every time we would, we would we did his take, and, and he he gave me some notes. Every like, remember in uh, in Rocky Two when I had the guy up against the uh, the rose? I'm like, oh, God, God what? Do I remember Rocky Two? <laughs> yeah. like, yes, yeah. of course I do. Oh my God, so, that is, dude, you take that with you. That's got to be yeah. a career highlight. Oh well, yeah, mean, and I, I just had to pretend on set. I was like, yeah, I remember Rocky Two. Right. Yeah, sure, I remember that. Calling yeah, people when you yeah, get back. Yeah, I was gonna say, yo, cut. <laughs> I mean, exactly. Like, kind of went back to my truck. Remember in Rocky Two? <laughs> yeah. We just did that. Yeah, it's so funny. I had I had I had the pleasure of interviewing him for Creed uh, for Fandango, and I was with him. And I said I cracked some joke, and he laughed. And I was I played it smooth in the interview, but I told everyone like, yeah. I made Sly laugh. I made yeah. him laugh. It's, it's a big because he's the guy, you know. Yeah. And the fact, and that's why I'm. I was when you said '67. I was like, that's. It also shows the, the the true friendship, the fact that you were with him way way before you guys were buddies, way before all this kind of success. The fact that he's you guys are still working together. You're directing him in movies now. That's got to be that's another career highlight, I guess, too. Here, right? It, it's great. I mean, Sly is my lifelong friend. Yeah, he's more a brother than a friend. Uh, but when I met Sly, his name was Mike, and he had a very very serious speech impediment. Oh, well. I mean, Sly had a very bad speech impediment. He couldn't pronounce certain words. Right. And um, he got this reel-to-reel tape recorder, and uh, we were sharing a place, and every morning at 5 a.m., he'd start to read, I Sing the Body Electric by Walt Whitman. Whoa. Or he'd do the bells or the raven from Poe, and he'd do it over and wow. over. He never took a speech class. He never went uh, to, to work on his uh, uh, diction. He did it himself over and over and over and as loud as he could. It must and be awesome to live with. He cured his stutter. Yeah. But that's, a, but that's, yeah. that's it's quite impeccable. Na- it's also yeah. the narrative. I mean, when you see Self-made. stories like Rocky, when you see Rocky, when you hear all this stuff of Rocky, where he's like, no, we're not going to have uh, whatever it was, Robert Redford do this movie. No, I'm doing this movie. I worked for this movie. I'm yeah. not going to take that big paycheck because I'm going to make this happen. He seems mm-hmm. to be that type of dude. Yeah, and there's no way it would have been what it was no without way. him. That, you needed that voice. You needed him. You needed that guy. In yeah. your heart at the time, did you think, okay, this guy has no shot, there's no way he's ever going to be able to make it to that level, or did you see something in him even when he had his speech impediment? You know, you're the first one to ask me that question, and for me to really answer this honestly, I thought Sly would make it right away. He I, would? I, you thought he yeah. would? Well, what? first of all, he's this dynamic hurricane force of energy. He's... He's, uh, his mind never stops working. He's always on his toes. I just, I just always thought he'd make it. I mean, I, I, I thought I'd, I'd get somewhere in the business too. I mean, I was, we were both very positive. Even though we were broke in New York, he slights and meat in the Dover Deli. You know, I'm working as a waiter, a cab driver, a mover. I mean, I had 40 different jobs in New York. Sounds and last two yeah. weeks, yeah. I get fired, and I, I don't care, <laughs> go to the next one. Because I don't want to, I want to be an actor and a writer, director anyway. But he had this force of will, and I, I just always assumed it. I, yeah. I, but it's funny you ask. I never really thought about it. But yeah, I did. I never thought. Oh no, I don't think so. I thought. He just had I watched him drive. cure himself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know. So as far as this goes with the skate plan, how did, how does the conversation come for the fact that you're gonna you're gonna direct this one? Did you guys? I mean, because there was maybe just he brought you on to it, or did you bring it up to him? How did how did no, it come no, around? No, no, no. He came over one day, and uh, we took a drive. We actually went to see a play by Carl Weathers, who oh, directed yes. his first play in Santa Monica at Larry Moss's Theater Workshop. What? And as uh, you know, he was dropping me off. He said, uh, you know, "I got this movie. It's a tight schedule. It can't be already. It's really, you know, you're not going to have a lot of time. You know, uh, I want to make a switch because I think they had someone else uh, on it. And uh, do you want to do it starting now?" And I said, absolutely. Yeah. And we we just 
took the script, started over, started a complete rewrite, changed yeah. the tone and demeanor of the movie and uh, work very closely because yeah. I because it's such a shorthand when you know right. somebody so long I'd write pages give it to him he'd cross them out change them make changes make suggestions and that's the process yeah. that we do completely was done tell me a little bit about working with uh, Batista because Batista is a guy that uh, he has he because I, I was a, I wrote for the WWE for a little while um, and I he was it was before I was there before he really popped. Before he came in, and when he be, he was a lot of these wrestlers, they come in. Some of them don't have careers. They do a couple of movies and they just disappear. The Rock is somebody who really has kind of right. blown up. But Batista, to be completely honest, I didn't know that same kind of question. I said, I don't know if he's going to be a big movie star, but he's a guy that improves. And just everything that I seen, that Hotel Artemis that he was in with Jodie Foster, he was, you could tell the levels that he would get to. Did you find that, that, he's, that, that he had that kind of dedication and uh, will that you're talking about with Sly, that he really wants to become like this next level performer? Well, here's how I met him. I met him, uh, he came to Mansfield, um, and uh, when he arrived in the set, I said, said uh, Dave wants to see he's here. I can, went, ran over, and uh, uh, he, he's, he came and met me in the prison. And uh, I'm looking, he's got his cap on, he has his handlebar mustache, really groomed hand. And he said, Hi, we met. And he goes, So, what do you think? And I'm looking at this snidely whiplash, <laughs> and my brain is going, this is horrible. It's, it's the worst thing I've seen. It's ridiculous. And he said, I really think it works for the character, and uh, you don't want to make a change, and so uh, uh, I'm ready to go. And I go, oh, okay, but Dave? And then he breaks out laughing. <laughs> and, you know, and he, so. He was messing with you. But hard. you know what? That's good. Dave has, here's what makes Dave, I think, uh, so special. He's so big, he's so strong, yeah. he's tough, but he's sensitive, and he has a softness inside, and he has Don't a... Don't tell people that. <laughs> Ma, he's not sensitive. Yeah. He has a humor. Yeah. No, but look, no big movie star can be a movie star unless they have vulnerability, yep. and unless they have some kind of access to uh, a feminine side of, what I mean by that, vulnerability. Yeah, and a Empathy. great sense of humor. Yeah. And sense of humor and, and a wit, so he's got it all. I think he showed that too because at Ryan Satin, who, who now you know Clyde took over pro, or bought pro wrestling sheet, and Ryan Satin, who crushes it over here with all his wrestling coverage, he interviewed Dave Batista, and Batista showed everything that you just said inside of that interview. He talked to him for like forty five minutes, but showed all of that, showed the vulnerability, showed the fact that he doesn't try to pretend that he knows it all. Because I'm as you can attest to, you're always learning for as long oh, as you've yeah. been, you're learning every single time. But mm -hmm. that's why I would kind of transition into that being a villain for the first time. Yeah. What did you learn about yourself inside of this performance? To where, is it something you want to do again? Is it something like, I did that now, let's move on? No, no, I, I think that uh, it felt it felt comfortable. I think they... Go on! <laughs> Just came out natural. <laughs> I, my, um, no, it... it, uh, it I think that uh, playing this type of villain and, and, and making it realistic it was, was something that was very interesting. I'd I, I did it again. I did a, a movie right after this one with Guy Pierce, where I'm a head of a biker gang, where I'm also another villain. It, it feels great. It feels, you know, it feels like something I want. It feels great. It feels great. You well, know, I yeah. use this guy on my kids now. Right. Like, you know, like when they need to clean the room. Get up! Go, go clean your room. But, but, you but the throwbacks. So this morning we on Collider we put uh, a comic book shopping with Jake Gyllenhaal, and Gyllenhaal yeah. inside of that interview said what you just said was because he has, he's played a lot of dark roles, yeah. and he said because it's fun and, and Corey goes it's fun to be dark so yeah because you challenge yourself that's the whole point to be an actor is that you're doing these things that you you finish this scene after going into this place like I accomplished that I made that work yeah. I had this vision in my head of what I wanted to do and I made it happen yeah well I mean like I am the bad guy you know, but but at the end of the day these guys killed my father right they, they put him at the, the you know the bottom of a boat and mm -hmm. they, they killed him and so I got you got to just kind of look at it that way you know what I mean that this I'm I, it's not about the money I got to get revenge for my father and and that's the challenge. It's, it's interesting. It's, I, it's nice playing a guy that's not really me. I think know? so too. Is like like you guys both said. Is it's hard to create a villain sometimes that isn't this guy. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, because I, it, it trends that mustache way. Mustache twirling yeah. for yeah. audio <laughs> listeners. Yeah. That that yeah. said, I, I would love to get it to. I mean, you got to be a certain level to to be the Gary old to do that Gary Oldman thing right. where you, I could go just everyone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do the orchestra. Yeah. I'd like to do that as well, but you know, this is a little. Yeah, but his character is right. 
this character, as far as he's concerned, is right. Yeah. They killed his father, yeah. he believes. Don't. He wants revenge. He wants to... I got a so I got a slice of I always say to Devin, and, yeah. you Shoot have right caps. on your side. <laughs> you have, sorry, you, you, have, you have right on your side. Right on your Why side. you're not the bad guy? As far as you're concerned, you're the good guy. Yeah. Right. No yeah. spoilers, but when I was watching the movie and you did an excellent job. Thank I you. I appreciate you guys, that. I was curious if when you were reading it, did you ever think your character was going to go a different way than he did? Because I was legitimately torn at some points. Uh, yeah, I thought it was going to get goofy. When I was first reading, I thought, okay, this is going to get over the top. But it never really got there. It always stayed at, at where the audience – and that's what made it interesting was the audience is, is torn between whether, you know, maybe he is – maybe he does have a point. Right. It's the um, Tony Soprano. You like, like half the, ep- the episodes you love him, the other half you hate yeah. him. You yeah. don't know who to pick. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. do want to jump back into the, the fight scene yeah. with Stallone, though, too, because like, like there's a couple things there that you go through your mind. Like you said, first of all, I'm toe-to-toe with Rocky. Yeah. That's the first. <laughs> yeah. The second thing is, oh, my God, I don't want to punch Rocky. Right. Uh, yeah. And I don't want to – you know, because, because <laughs> you like John do I, I didn't worry about that. You didn't worry about I didn't worry about hitting him. Yeah. Just, I didn't I – didn't, he's, he's – He's I mean, notorious I, for saying bring it on, right? I mean, look right. at the stuff if he I, did. If I, I'm sure he's been hit. Yep. That's why I kept yeah. thinking. Just, Dolph Lundgren so, like hit him in the chest in '85 and almost what caved it was caved right. his chest in or something. And Dolph Lundgren's a lot bigger than me, so I didn't really <laughs> I didn't really worry. The, the the crazy thing with that fight scene is is that it wasn't supposed to be that way. We we had a whole I'd gotten there uh, two weeks early and we had this choreographed fight scene with the John Wick stunt team and, and oh, it was all yeah, this big, awesome. big yeah. action and we showed it to Sly and, and Sly thought that since you know the other characters in the movie had these kind of fight scenes. We should do something different for our our scene, and he wanted to do this. He just wanted to try fighting. He said, yeah. "We'll go in there. We'll get in this. We'll get in this cell, and we'll fight. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, we'll go back. We'll revisit this, and we'll try this after. Mm-hmm. But we went in there, and you know, and just felt right. It just, you know, what it felt like. It felt like being a kid again, yeah. where you know you play fight. We just took out the psh, psh, psh. We just, that's all we did. <laughs> yeah. we, we went in there. So you and cops uh-huh. yeah. and, and we would lo- he he would load up. I knew where it was coming. Yeah, and I you know and I would I would sell it just like you know in WWE. It's, like it's all about sell. It. This is the hero, and I got it. To make this guy look good, I got to take bumps. Right, and John, that's got to be the beauty of it also too, because you, you you trust in Sly so much also, and then he trusts in you that you you can navigate that scene to say, okay, I, I yeah, I, I have I have to say something on this because Sly's uh, uh, really articulated how this was a fight and how it was not choreographed. Now, one side of me, I, I love the way the fight is, and Devin took it great, and uh, they work so well together. But the other side of me goes, as he's going, it's unchoreographed. If something had gone wrong, mm-hmm. I would be uh, directing traffic in <laughs> Simi Valley at right. the corner. I'd right. be at a stop sign with it. Just because I'd never work from New York. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he but I knew Sly Sl- would still protect you yeah. if that happened. Yeah, but, but Sl- I understand. I know Sly so yeah. well. I knew, and Devin has had 15 years MMA experience. He's been really working on watching Muay Thai. 10, 10 years. Uh, About 10, uh, 10 years. 10, 10, 10, but a I little knew, over 10. I knew from watching, watching him watching. work. <laughs> I knew from watching his move. So when he said, Sly said, let's go, you know, we discussed it a little bit, and then that was one take. Does that? Believe me. He said one, you know, yeah. when that was the, because there's a, almost a full minute of the fighting in a seven by nine foot cell with no padding on the walls. This is a, you know, and they won at it and there's no cuts. So it's wow. not like you're, you it's what you see is what draw. you get. And yeah. you got to get the D, the, the other guy in the room with us was oh. the DP with the camera on his shoulders and he was pivoting with us. Like when we would move and he would move, it was all, that's it, was a, it was a beautiful little dance that yeah. really just worked out. And I, that's when, that's one of the times where I said, I have to do this and I can't mess this up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When yeah. did you, when did you start training? 10 years ago you said? I, in, I what's, what's was style? boxing oh, okay. in Vancouver for a while. And then I went over to Thailand and I tried Muay Thai there. Oh, shit. And I came back here and, and just as a hobby, I've been doing Muay Thai and jiu-jitsu and a little of this and that. that. So where is that? I play something? golf. <laughs> yeah, I play golf. You're like, so that's a hobby, golf. I do Muay Thai. I like, I play golf. Yeah. <laughs> but, but boxing is, dude, the, like boxing is almost like the yeah. uh, the marijuana, right? It's like the gateway to get into it. And then Boxing, so, well, yeah, boxing. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I got, I got, see, I quit acting for a while, and I was doing other stuff, and, and I started getting out of weight. So I got into boxing is strictly, you know, I, I don't want to just sit on a treadmill. I don't want to yeah. sit on an elliptical. Let's mm-hmm. go try boxing. And I just fell in love with that. And then when I went to Thailand, right. I was – but all of a sudden, we're throwing elbows and yeah. You know, but that decision of th- going to Thailand, like where, where, like where does that come from? My wife and I 
we just wanted to go. We, we got two plane tickets. We went to Thailand. Yeah. To, we arrived in Bangkok, and we just we ended up in Laos and Vietnam, and we just oh, for dude, a month awesome. and a half, two months, we were just yeah. traveling everywhere and, and just training. And, and now we take the kids back there all the time. That's great. Yeah. Enough, Roxy doesn't know how to get anywhere, and her GPS took her to Thailand too. She's been lost. <laughs> <laughs> Roxy's notorious. All right, all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's great. So I mean, I mean like well, that's also would answer my that answers my previous question to why you weren't really nervous about it because you've also had ten years of training in it. Yeah. Too. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. I'm curious, I was comfortable. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So I've actually been lucky enough to spend a, a good amount of time with Sly as well um, because we have a very close friend. And I feel like any time I've been with him, he holds court. You know, he's telling stories and they're unbelievable. Yeah. But on set, is it the same way? And when you're the director, is it hard sometimes when are people looking at him for answers as well? Or is it your room to hold court in and he kind of follows your lead? Same thing with being the actor in it. You know, uh, when Sly has suggestions that come a mile a minute, I'm used to it because we've known each other right. so long. So when he said, let's go for it in the cell, I'm all for it. When he said, let's put the rod through your, you know, that character's head, I go, great, you know? And then I just, you know, I decided how to film it. But, you know, I make decisions very quickly. So does he. Um, we work together on the script. You know, I mean, I'm the, uh, you know, I'm the credited co-writer with the fellow who wrote a draft before I came on. But even though Sly is credited, Sly went through those pages. You know Sly. He, he holds nothing back. He crossed it out. He said, change it, try this. And so it was, you know, really we worked so well together. So working with him also, I can't, I can't really say to you it's like I've directed other actors or stars because i know them so well right so there's it's like a partnership it, the, right yeah it's well it's not only really, it's it's just a modicum of communication i look at him he look at me it's one word and and you get it right you go so far back you know yeah. uh, so it was great i had a blast uh you know i want to do my next movie i mean we just had a blast for me it was a uh, because he's sly and he's earned, you know, he's earned the respect. It's it's a it's an amazing work environment when he gets to set. Yeah. Everybody just becomes focused, and there's not a lot of goofing around, and and yeah. you know, there's a lot of listening to John and to Sly, and we just it just becomes this really cool work work environment where everybody's just zero, you know, yeah. zero. When in. you when you're in that scene, uh, I mean, either of you, is there ever kind of like, all right, here's my note on that, and and you kind of look at Sly, you're like, what do you, what if we do that? Do you ever like, do you know what I mean? Where he, or he's just like, let me take this. One. I, I I tried to be as open with suggestions and and uh, as possible because I don't want to be the guy where I'm just gonna, you know, blow smoke up as you know and just not, you know, I want to I want to I want to yeah. give him something and you know, of course, listen at the end of the day because he's who he is. Right, but I right. still didn't want to be, you know. When you said you gave up acting, what was why? Um, so I started working when I was eight years old, yeah. and uh, my wife has the biggest crush on you. I told her you were coming in today. Like she loved you. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate yeah, yeah. it. It's great. But she would have come I, I after <laughs> after Final Destination. Things, you know, the roles. I started doing some goofy horror films for money and mm -hmm. this and that. And I was in a place where it was more important to which club I was going at night uh, than than the work itself. Mm -hmm. And so I was burnt out, and I didn't know whether I wanted to do it anymore. Because um, I wasn't doing what I wanted to do, yeah. so I went back and got into some real estate stuff in Vancouver, and wow. uh, I actually got a in snail mail. I got a script like a, for, for Max Payne. It was like yeah. five or six years later, yeah, and, they, and they were like, "Would you audition for this?" And I did, and all of a sudden I'm back in in Los Angeles, and I got a manager, and and then I started doing things that I like, and now I'm, now I'm just I'm just kind of I'm not working right now, and I'll do you know I, this was with Sly yeah. that I loved, then I did mm -hmm. one with Guy Pierce that I loved, then I did one with Travolta. I'm kind of just. It's not about the money. It's yeah. about kind of like I'm working with these. I just I did a movie with Sharon Stone where she played Damn. my cracked out my mother. And, yeah. and now I'm just kind of like bucket list. Bucket yeah, list. man, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Bucket list. And you think, though, do you think, so though, Devin, also from what you were talking about to where you when you discovered um, uh, martial arts that because everyone, my daughter, who's who's seven years old, is in karate. And you just see the change for with the discipline and everything, too, like because you were looking for discipline in your life. That, yeah. that And then once you did and you found that, that these positive things started happening. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, it opened up a door for me where it's it's now it's it's a hobby that I, I just it just uh, you know yeah. you just kind of go and you breathe it out and and uh you know it's, it's definitely opened a lot of doors what's next on the bucket list man what who who, who who's someone out there that you want to that you want to work show you want to be on cobra the series uh, yeah man <laughs> cobra the series i don't know man i'd like to i'd like to work with sly again on something oh, yeah. more, more dramatic I, that, that guy you know people see him as an action star and they they watch him in the rambos but copland and like yeah. i mean that oh, guy shit, 
He, he got nominated for Creed. Exactly. Yeah. Um, he's got he's got chops, and I'd love to do I'd love to do a Creed style scene. Those scenes he's got in Creed, yep. man, I'd love to 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 bounce back and forth. Awesome. Now that we've done you know the, the, <laughs> right. this, yeah. I'd love to just you know to to but, act with him. That's one of the. He he really he has such respect for you. I appreciate for what it. you did, and he has. A, so you're in great shape. What about you, John? Are you going to direct some of the Cobra series or what? You know, I, I'd love to. I don't know where he's at with it. Yeah. Uh, you know, but he's, he's got a lot of things going. I don't know yeah. what's next for him, but uh, we're looking for something together. Because cool. We had a, just a fabulous time. Well, gentlemen, yeah. you, you don't have to look too far right now, guys, because you can go and you can find Escape Plan, The Extractors. It is today. Get it digital and streaming. Once again, that's Devin Sawa and John Hartsfield here, the director and star of said film. So, guys, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. Thank, thank you. See us again. We'd Thanks love to very have you much. Back. Yeah. Really appreciate it. You got it. All right. After the break, guys, we'll be back and we'll talk about that Gremlins thing. What the hell is going on with that? Robocop after the break. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. You looking for a Star Wars fix? Well, Rule of Two is that show. It drops on Collider Video's main YouTube channel, as well as on Podcast One's Jedi Council feed. So go over there, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. We talk everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of deep dives and a lot of conversations that go all in. You know what to do. Subscribe, join us there, and rise. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Mailbag. A new episode drops every Saturday and Sunday in your face and in your ears, answering the questions from you fans about the world of entertainment, film, and television. Me and great guests from our sphere do the best to answer your questions from Twitter, from Instagram, and of course, email as well, every Saturday and Sunday. Hi, I'm Koi Jandro, host of Collider Heroes, and I'm here to tell you we've got 20-minute episodes coming at you on Collider Video, on the YouTube, as you've always loved it. Plus, now we've got hour-long podcasts dropping every Thursday, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast because it's going to get even more sweaty on the podcast. Plus, every week we're going to try to get some very special guest interviews, all of the people that help shape these movies and TV shows you love. So, video, podcast, interviews all coming at you. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Stay sweaty. Hey guys, Perry Nemiroff here to let you know that The Witching Hour is all over Collider right now. You can listen to that horror film podcast with myself, with Haley Fouch. We talk about witchiness, we talk about slashers, we talk about space horror, you name it, all on that show on the Collider Factory feed. We also have clips on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. And on top of that, you can find an article all about Witching Hour every single Tuesday on Collider.com. Check it out, get scared. Hopefully you survive the witching hour. What's up Collider fans? Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com where you can find the top stories throughout the week in the world of professional wrestling. If you're a wrestling fan like myself, then you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not checking out all the shows we do every week on YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. In particular, on Wednesdays, we've got a SmackDown recap show hosted by John Roca and myself where we pick apart and, and talk about every little thing that happened on the blue brand. So do yourself a favor and go subscribe at youtube.com slash C slash wrestling sheet. Hey guys, Perry here to let you know about the new edition of Collider Movie Talk. We are going to five days a week. We have a short, sweet 20 minute show where we focus on the two biggest stories of the day. You can expect to see all of your favorite Collider personalities on the show, including Jeff Snyder, John Roca, Haley Fouch. You're getting Josh McCuga every Friday. We are gonna have a blast. It's gonna be informative, fun, come join us. 3 p.m. PT live every single day of the week right here on the Collider Video YouTube channel. You can also find the show on the Collider Movie Talk feed on our podcast network. So go watch, go listen, however you prefer to get all of your movie news. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Sports Time. Well, you know, if you've been watching us every week, you know we break down the latest and the greatest in the world of sports, talk about the big issues, the big games, all of it with a rotating band of guests like Matt Nose and Josh McCuga. We've had Taylor Bashotti on. We've had so many great guests. Now, if you want to see more of Sports Time or you want to try it out for the first time, remember to subscribe to Collider Sports YouTube channel. And if you want to take us along with you in your ears, you can go and subscribe to the Collider Sports podcast feed for all the sports goodness.
Hey guys, it's Riley here. Let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. You know it, right? It drops every Thursday on Collider Conversations, and I have guests from all across the space. John Roca, Gray Drake, Alexander Desplat came on at one point. We talk everything from movies, we talk about life, and everything in between. What do you want to hear? What do you want to talk about? It's the Riley Roundtable every Thursday on Collider Conversations. You get it there. Hello, how are you guys doing? I'm Christian Harloff. I'm the host of Collider Jedi Council. We talk about everything Star Wars. And if you want to catch our weekly show where we talk about the latest and greatest in Star Wars, it's movie news, it's canon, it's all of it. We take questions from you guys. How do you do it? Main channel, that's right, right here. Subscribe to this channel and you can listen, you can watch, you can do all of it. But if you want to just listen to it, you got the podcast feed too. Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever it is, you can listen to it in your car. Do all of it. It's Star Wars. Episode 9 is coming out. And then after episode you got TV shows, so we're going to be your sports center for Star Wars. Do it. Come on. Be real. Dun, dun, dun. It's funny because as soon as that we went off the uh, air, because Devin Saw was talking about how he is super excited for the reboot. Robocop, yeah, we uh, were talking off air. Yeah, That's man. Great. Yeah, the Bloom Camp stuff, and we'll get into that. But uh, that was cool, man. I, awesome. I really uh, I didn't know what to expect here from uh, both Devin Sawa and John Hertzfeld. And there was. Um, that was just a really fun in- interview. Totally. Because I love when people are just kind of candid and just want to have a conversation. Yeah. They're not trying to protect themselves or anything. They just want to no. talk. I'm just bummed about the fact that I didn't get to ask them about 50 Cent. Oh, oh my right. God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's so subdued in the movie. Just like a regular dude. Right. He's not even in like a ton of it. He's Do just... you watch Power on Stars? No. Do you watch Power? Right, Power? No. no. You it's love actually it. He's pretty... amazing. Okay. So, da- so David Griffin, this is a Griffin recommendation. Like, you have to watch Power. You have to watch Power. So He's Amanda will not do it. No, no, no. Yeah. So I started watching season one of Power and I was like, all right. It's sort of like it's it's a little Sopranoish, okay. right? But like a little more escal- and then all of a sudden season two it went to this. It was is awesome. The show is great. It's great, yeah. I highly Stars? recommend Power Stars. It's Fifty Cent. It's the girl that played Lil Kim in Notorious. That oh. actress and Notori, I think, is her first name. Notori and Notorious. Yeah, correct. A yeah. uh, couple other great actors, but it's a it's a really well done show. I mean, Fifty Cent produces it and he's in like small parts he's not the star of it uh but he's it's really good yeah, yeah he's yeah. great he's actor. really yeah. good and just like the most talented i've actually got, got to talk to him a couple times too yeah. and the nicest chill like he's unlike any other rapper i've ever met yeah. because usually they're kind of like uh, i mean especially musicians can be like really loud and boisterous and center of attention dude 50 he's cent not. is just shooting down straight Earth, right? down yeah. the middle yeah, yeah, yeah man what a cool yeah. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. yes but anyway it was it was really fun to talk to both those guys yeah. and to hear and it was cool to, to hear devin's story the fact that i'm glad you brought that up as far as asking why he took that break yeah. it's interesting it sounds like he's still on the break he kind of was like when projects come to me yeah. or i hear something that i'm dying to be with somebody in but otherwise i'm still just you, well, was, because it, what, was it awkward when i said my wife had a crush on him no i think it's well, great. I, don't, I don't know how you reacted to that. Yeah. I think he, he reacted to it perfectly. He's like, you oh, didn't show you so a much. picture yeah. and say, do you have a crush on her back? Let's do Let's this shit. My, yeah. wife, my wife just texted me and wants, said, show me the goods. Yeah, yeah. Uh, show me the goods. No, but no, the no. pillow. No, but when he, was, uh, when he was talking about that, I think that from what he insinuated was the fact that when he had the success for Final Destination and it, and he was younger that it was all about the clubs and the women and, and the booze and all that stuff too and he's now Not married yeah, he's married he's really, and it, it's about career it's about kids. making kids and making sure that it's it's the right thing to do and feel satisfied and, and that's why I asked the question about martial arts because a lot of times you, you, you get that balance mm-hmm. you know and so it's good It's good. I've always been a fan of that guy yeah. so I'm, I'm more, more of a fan after sitting down and talking with 100%. him 100% so. and John Hertzfeld was incredible I'm yeah, talking yeah. about Kobe Cobra, Cobra. And just like the cool, I just want to like those are the dudes you want to go out and have a drink with. Just yeah. like kick it, you know what? Like a road trip with John Hertzfeld would be effing incredible. Imagine Easily. him and Sly living together at like seventeen or whatever yeah. it was. That's yeah. insane, crazy. What? At University of Miami of all places <laughs> like, too. You know what, what I mean? is yeah. happening? Bring up, bring up a picture of John Hertzfeld uh, Cobra. Yeah, uh, because I remember. I mean, immediately when I googled it this morning, just images. Yeah, you remember? The, you'll see him. Oh yeah, yeah dude. Man, the first one. First one. First picture. First yeah, picture. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah, man. Holy moly. For sure. Uh, totally hot. Yeah. I want to watch Cobra. Sorry. I, I definitely want to watch Cobra. Yeah. Uh, I want to see that series. You know what we should do? Want to make a and, Cobra uh, series ourselves? Well, yes. Oh. But uh, do like a video commentary of us watching Cobra. Because yeah. there aren't many people out there that appreciate it. the no, the, like Cobra the way we do. I mm-hmm. know, but that's the problem. Yeah. Uh, that, that nobody would watch well, it. Well, because JT, JT, and Tom, JT did it. and Tom would watch it. Yeah. Cobra well, well, out. Did they cobra. do a cobra? One they already? did a cobra one. Oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I did the one with them that was over the top, and yeah. we had a blast oh. doing that one. Cobra's amazing. Yeah. It's such a good. It's, it was a double yeah. feature. You may not like over the top 
You no. actually would like Cobra. You'd like yeah. Cobra. Cobra. Yeah. I mean, it, why? It, what's the difference? Cobra is almost like a mix between Terminator. Yeah. Without the, do you know, like yeah. the grittiness it's, of Terminator, it, Los Angeles it murder. It's a human Terminator. Totally. It's it, 100%. It, 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 it really is. You're, yeah. you're not wrong, but it's yeah. and it's a but it's got a it's got a thriller horror mm-hmm. feel to it way more so than it does yeah. like a standard '80s action flick. Over top is an '80s action flick. It's more about. Did you ever see Real Steel? The, mm. the one with Hugh Jackman no. and the That's robots. Good. It's a really good it's movie. It's a really no. good movie. But it's over the top. I'm, yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm missing so many 80s movies. No, that's Real not Steel's oh. like 2014. Oh, I've never, I literally have never even heard of that movie. Oh. Really? Real it was a big Steel? hit. Yeah, Hugh Jackman. Hit. Hugh Jackman was in it. Wait, what? It was a big hit fighting robots, robots. The fighting robots? No, I don't remember Oh, it was a big hit. Where was it? Sean Levy, right? Directed that? Yes. 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 Yeah, we. it was 2011, so I was already out here. It's one of those movies where the trailer comes out and you're like, this is going to be bad. Everyone's calling it Rockin' Sock and Roll. Yeah, and Let me then see it. it's really good. Just bring a real steel, real steel um, image. Actually, you know what, Cody? Bring up that picture uh, from Real Steel that I wanted you to bring up, if you don't mind. Not um, you're talking about the Shack one, right? No. no Wait, no, let me no. ju- first. Let me just see what okay. the movie is, Josh. Yeah, uh, got it right here. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Thanks, man. Cool, cool. What's right. happening? Cool. No, it's no. Oh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> I, I just wanted to see the movie. Oh, is Real Steel not a real movie? Yeah, no, Real Steel is a movie. It is a real movie. Oh. She, she, it's, the show, Roxy doesn't like this picture. She, you know, I think well, I, I, it's no, I, I appreciate that they made it. I just, like, Did someone draw that yesterday? It's, no, yeah. so it's yeah. on, on my Instagram. Hold on, let me just, call do I ha- this. I, if I'm going to be so short, do I have to be so chubby? <laughs> <laughs> That's a hobbit. That's a Jack Saunder on uh, Instagram. You're on really hobbit. Like really good. Yeah. Also, I'm blonde those, these days. Look at those socks. I know, socks are great. Socks like those? I have those would you socks. That's up? why he put them on me. What those are it, my fandom what socks. Would it, uh. What would it take for you to actually dress exactly like that and get your hair like that for a full show? Um, well, somebody, first of all, would have to pay for my hair to get like that. Right. No, it's not going to happen. Okay. Well, all right. <laughs> all right. Let's, let's, let's show pictures of real steel. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, after knowing what the hell, how much, it was $400 probably just for the costume that, right? for Roxy. To yeah. do that hair. Yeah. Uh, all right. So here's the images for real steel. Uh, again, yeah, bring bring up that picture of the poster. Please. I literally like have this. never heard of this movie. Really? Oh, it's oh, great. You'd love, it's great. You would, you would love this movie. Yeah. It's so hard. I can't believe. Isn't it crazy when you miss something? Yeah. <laughs> you, just, you just missed it. But no, you would love this movie. This, it's a, I remember seeing this movie, and same thing you just said, being shocked at how good yep. it was. Mm-hmm. And then I told my wife about it. She's like, I am not watching Real Steel. I go, I promise you that you will like this movie. She's What's like, the Rotten Tomato score? Yeah, she's, she's like, there's no, no. She said, like, there's no Make chance I'm gonna like this. She loved Real Steel. Totally. We watched. She watched it twice. I, I, Amanda cried twice. She watched because of her cried. Because it's my a, father. It is. Yeah. The end of it, yeah, I cried for sure. It, yeah. It, it's amazing. It like click. No. No. Because the reason, oh. the reason I brought it up. The Adam Sandler movie. No. The reason. The re- I cried at the end of that. The reason I, I brought it up is because. Thank you, Cody. Over the top has a very similar story because it's a father and son relationship. Yes. Um, but huge, and you know, our, my boy who I just brought up in that uh, yesterday to play Darth Bane. Yeah, yeah there he is. Uh, Kevin Durand is in the in that. Oh. Movie. Uh, so yeah, this movie came out in I believe it was 2011. Am I wrong? Or was it 2012, boys? 2011. 2011. 2011. Yeah, September 2011. Yeah, it came out and it did box office to me worldwide. Is it 300 t- million. 300. They were talking about a sequel. Like, I want to say. They were talking rotten about tomatoes, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah rotten tomatoes. tomatoes. I want to see. 60 percent. Is that what it was? No, I saw it. Sixty. That's 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 way too low. Way too low. That's yeah. What's the audience score? I bet you it's higher. Can you just just bring up Rotten Tomatoes, guys? The actual site. Great, great A. Cinema score A. Just bring up the fucking site, please. I'm taking it. Relax, guys. He keeps going back and forth. That's what I'm saying. Seventy-three percent. Seventy-three percent. That is bogus, McBogerson. Seventy-three percent. But wait, Cody. Did you, do you understand though? Like, he did you see everything he was looking for was in that paragraph. I know, he was but just we, trying to yeah. find the link to the Rotten Tomatoes page. Ah, I see. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that, 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 he was that, doing what you guys were asking. It, does, it doesn't play. No, it doesn't, it doesn't I play on know. screen. Uh, uh, what, Roxy? I, I don't want to get down on him, but I don't think he was doing what we were asking. <laughs> Especially He's literally not, clicking the link right there. That yeah, but maybe not what I was asking, because like I was like, please, can I just see one image? Please, can I just see one image? Please, I would love to see one image. He pulled a picture of me as an elf. Well, <laughs> that, that was the, the joke was me pulling. That's fine, but it's not doing what I, he, Cody's saying. He's doing what I'm asking. He's not doing I was what doing I'm doing asking. What Josh was asking. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was a bit, yeah. and the, the bit failed. And Cody then after and I that, apologized. we pulled up images. Yeah. Right, but you, we, you can't claim you were doing what I you was asking. You can't do two things at once. It's, it's, almost, thing it's almost, almost like they're in this separate cockpit of the ship, <laughs> and it's like at any moment they just want to release this portion and let us crash into an asteroid because they're like, fuck them. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> want to fly. Mm-hmm. Because you get rid of the dead weight. <laughs> well, do you guys ever watch? Do you ever watch back, or you don't? Yeah, yeah. I see them doing their dances. It's unreal. It's funny. So like, I can the get best. annoyed, but I'm not mad about it. No. Cody is the they best. They're watching a fucking he car chase. Absolutely <laughs> the best engineer <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've ever ever worked with. Dropped into slack. Yeah, it's crazy. It was, it was so- fun. It's funny. It's crazy. I mean, that's that that this is why Cody gets away with it. Because Cody gets away with all this shit because he's funny. <laughs> he's yeah. zo- yes. Fifty percent of the show yeah. we're zoomed in on one of our foreheads. I know. <laughs> and it's so good. That's the problem. <laughs> I've because done it today many times. I know you have. Uh, because that's that's the problem. Because and there's two there's two things to it. Every single time I want to be like, all right, you gotta go away from that. It's like it and I always started with this and it's always legit. I'm like, it was really funny. But <laughs> and he goes and, he, and every answer is always the same. I know. All right. And he well, changes it up. It was like the, the something else it's ridiculous. So it's great. It, it was the fantasy updates in the old Schmodown days. As, yeah. Was as Cody and I didn't do a thing about fantasy. We just Ever. played out the you scene. You did in the beginning. Sort of. In the beginning, yeah, you guys yeah, yeah, would. Yeah. And then you wouldn't even look at the fantasy teams no. anymore. Like, you're, like, you're like, why'd you get rid of it? Because it was literally just skits. It they were just skits. funny yeah, skits. <laughs> We What's, did one where we were just like people scored, uh, yeah. they got points. And yeah, that was <laughs> it was very, it was again same, same thing, same yeah. narrative, very funny. Yeah, just, just couldn't use it. Yeah, couldn't and, even, use and then it. I replaced it with Frank, and Frank just stopped doing the stats. <laughs> I look one day. I'm like, where are the stats? They haven't been on the, the show for like three months. I'm like, where are they? That's oh, good. Uh, they're gone. Good thing you're having him do crowd warm up. At- <laughs> no, no, he's he's been doing the Schmodown rundown. It's been crushing. Yeah, that, yeah. that show is in the best rhythm it's ever been on because they they air it on Saturdays. They do. It's like it, it is my must listen to on Saturdays because even not even as to get feedback for the show, but they have interviews from co- competitors and managers all the time, and it's 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 really. I've never asked to be on. Well, you will be. Because I'm sure I'm sure Brad will have it. Brad Brad and Whatever. Frank work so well together, and Chris Clark was producing over there. So yeah, yeah it is a really it's good really show. good, and it's on it's the really Showdown uh, podcast feed. You can listen to it, and you can also uh, watch it on the channel. But it's it's a good way to get, get into the show also because they break down the the week and the week of the matches, the upcoming matches. Uh, they're great. I love both those guys for sure. Even though Frank sometimes has ridiculous takes, but he still fights for him. It's like first take now that show. Oh really? Yeah, they they'll have a Showdown point, and they'll, they'll argue, and I'm. 99% of the time always on Brad's side yeah. but Frank argues his points very well uh, but they're always wrong I like it yeah I like mm-hmm. it um, anyway hey real quick I yes. wanted to give a shout out uh, something really cool happened to me yesterday and it's about this show is I went to the Starbucks up here in Burbank yeah. and a girl came up to me she goes you're Josh McCougar I said yeah she's like I listen to Collider Live every day right. nice. it's my favorite I love all you guys she wanted me to pass along a hello her name was Sam she was lovely hello Sam, Sam. Yeah. Oh, hi Sam yeah, yeah. Nice. she was great she's, she was a big fan of Collider Live so did you sing her the vagina song or no I did not it doesn't feel Feel quite the same. Not in the Ooh, probably yeah. not the right place. thing. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, probably would have gotten arrested. Yeah. yeah. Oh, vagina! Uh, oh, right, right. hey! Yeah, Do you have one? No. Great. Oh, Josh for nice tea. Thanks. Doesn't I'll, work. Great the same. to meet you, vagina. Right. Cop, I see, I cops see that following now. you. Yes, to your correct. Point. I do yeah. see that now. Yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. Now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, news and notes and worthy stuff that we're going to talk about. Mm. So uh, a lot of things happening in the world of movie news, Riley. What do you got? That was the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> the first, very first trailer for Knives Out, Ryan Johnson's new movie that he wrote and directed. Uh, Cody's mad at you. Yeah, that worked. Uh, has dropped uh, online. I watched it. You watched it. Did you watch it? Did, we, yeah, I don't think I got it out in time. But cool. this is Ryan Johnson's next movie, and it is damn good. <laughs> you all right? <laughs> yeah, it was just funny. Roxy and I exchanged a funny one. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it, was, it was a really good trailer. It was a really it's a trailer. great trailer. It's like uh, what Clue mm-hmm. meets the uh, murder on uh, Orient Express. What is it called? The, yeah, uh, murder yeah. on the Orient Express. 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 Uh, yeah, it seems like an Agatha, Agatha Christie type thing, but mixed with it's got his own unique style to it. So, is I, it um, a comedy or drama? He's a little bit of both. Right? Oh. Yeah, it looks. We call that a it Looks a lot of funny. I think drama. A lot of Chris, funny. In Chris there. Evans is my favorite part of the whole trailer yep. because he, I watched the red band, obviously, of, of the of the trailer, and he uh, it's it's a good role for him to take coming off the heels of Captain America. You it looks know? like he's he, having fun. At the end of it, he's just like, he, so basically the premise is they're trying to figure out this whole film. Some uh, Christopher Plummer is the fa- is the father, like the father. Of it, and he's murdered. Murdered, and they, they have to figure out who did it. They think someone inside of the family did it, and and it's Daniel Craig who's investigating mm-hmm. it. And he's going around, he's asking all these questions, and um, at the, and Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. And at the very end, I I, see, I assume that Chris Evans is like one of the you know w- one of the family, like the young kind of hot shot family. He looks over, he's like, "Fuck you, eat shit, <laughs> eat shit, definitely eat shit." It's, <laughs> it, 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 it's really funny. Did you it's like great. the show? Obviously, I didn't see it. Oh, you, you didn't. didn't see Why, it? obviously? 
I don't because know. of what Riley said. Yeah, oh, I didn't send it out. He didn't send it out. Okay, yeah. I thought yeah, I thought maybe you saw it this morning. Okay, I, yeah, it's right. It's true. He didn't send it to me. I looked at. It. I, I actually watched it before him. No, I was yeah. busy watching the the, the two movie. hour movie, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which was great. Yeah. 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 Um, no, I I I missed this one, but based off your guys' description, I'm in. Here's a question. Great. But here's a question that I really have. I'm wondering, you know, and I and I hate to open this can of worms, but oh, shit. No, yes. you know, the cookies. No, because so the people obviously there are people out there who hate. And hate Last Jedi, right? It's already starting. Will they, you really? Well, they. I was just gonna say, would they? Would you think that they could watch this trailer objectively? Probably no, not, no. right? They they're can't. they're already they're already responding and, so, and saying shit about the Last yeah. Jedi. So, it's, it's it's so stupid. It's like can can you just can you separate? Like like I said, I'm not a big fan of the movie, but this of Last Jedi. But I can separate and say this trailer. Well, I'm also a fan of of Brick and, and oh, Looper Brick very much. Um, so this is to me. Wait, Ryan Johnson did Looper? Yeah. Oh yeah. Did not, and Brick. You know me. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, love the director. Brick's How many amazing. of our favorite directors have done movies we don't like? A ton, uh, absolutely. All of them? Uh, yeah, everyone except Joe Carnahan. <laughs> Tarantino. You've loved all of his movies? And love yeah. all of them, but I didn't do it. But Jackie Brown to me is, oh, is fine. Oh, okay. it's the best. I like Jackie yeah, I gotta, Brown. I got to see it again. I, I gotta love see it again. Jackie Brown. I got to yeah. see it again. Just Watch saying, it again. Most of the directors that we love put out one movie a that you're just like, no. Yeah, I, I would say. And he, I love Last Night Eye, so I'm not saying that. I'm just saying for those people, like, it's not his only movie he's ever done. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it just be, it just got a different thing because of Star Wars, you know, and, and because of it, it was such a polarizing film. Uh, Let me ask you a question. Yes. All right. To go off your point, Ryan Johnson does these amazing movies. Brick was great. I had no idea he did Looper. Again, we know my Schmodown knowledge does not go not to directors, directors no. right? If somebody offered you a Star Wars movie, mm -hmm. would you take it? You're talking about directing? I'm directing it. Would Today? You, yes. Me? No. I look like a fucking dope. I don't have the experience that Ryan Johnson or these no, guys no, no, have. No, 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 no. You're like the Ryan Johnson in this oh. situation. I have experience. Oh. You have experience as a director. And I have my knowledge of Star Wars as it is also? Sure. 100% of it. Yes. Hmm. I would, I would, I would and then I'd delete Twitter. I would. I would. <laughs> yeah, yes. Right. I would never also look at social media. media again. But I don't think I'd yeah. touch it with a 30-foot pole. Because I, I would. people would have. 10-foot pole? Eh, maybe it's yeah. forty foot pole. I, I, again, the first thing I would do is I would, I would, and they let me do whatever I want. I would jump into an old Republic story, you mm. know, because, like I said, though, I think. The, but I'm it, just saying, in the saga where Ryan Johnson got the where movie. he took the, the episode eight, it just depends. You don't. We're never gonna know the real story behind all of the uh, conversations that people had. Like you can believe one side of it that him and JJ were on the same page and that JJ liked his stuff and. Or you can believe the other side of it to where they weren't on the same page at all and they and they and it was basically take your own movie You take your own movie. you can believe you're never gonna know, mm -hmm. you know So when it comes if you have I think that the one thing that I would want to do is I would want More of if you get this banning off and white stuff that you think is gonna happen to where it's there's gonna be three movies They're gonna put they're gonna have a plan that's when I would want to take a Star Wars movie when there's a plan because it's dangerous not to take a plan because there's too many expectations. Mm -hmm. You're, you can make a great movie, but if it doesn't fit the other two, people are like, what the fuck? Right. What is this? There's no, there's no plan because, like I said, with Episode Nine, I think that you could walk out of Episode Nine saying this is a great movie, but you can tell there wasn't a plan. Mm -hmm. I hope that that's not the case, but you can tell that it's kind of where we might be leading up to. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't take away that this trailer was cool. You yeah. didn't answer my question, Roxy. Would you do it? Not with my Star Wars level of knowledge. Okay. If I had, mo I, I, you guys know I love Star Wars, but I, it's not like I've gone and read all the books and I know everything that's canon. And it. it Let's just be... say hypothetical, uh, hashtag RIP hypothetical questions. Even though we put it on TV talk, yeah. um, you have some knowledge of it. But they say, Roxy, we really like what you did with Looper and with Brick. I uh, do have some. You knowledge. have you have seven months to get your script, read the books, whatever. Do you do it? Seven months. Yep, that's that's your time to line. make the movie. No, to to, to learn, to research. write, yeah, and I do think it, I and could. then get the Because of all the people I know in the space, and because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And also, there it is. and not to take anything away from yourself, she's maybe the best person I've ever seen when it comes to research. Research. Yes. I'm a pretty good researcher. So then mm -hmm. I would, if I, but but again, I don't. I'm not a director, so I would need that. Right. And I would. There's a lot of hypotheticals well, going yeah. on. We're but assuming yes. you've directed, and what Josh is saying, you've directed Brick and Looper. You yeah. have experience. Let's say on what if. Yeah, like today, mm -hmm. no. And I think that a lot of people right away would say, yeah, absolutely, I would do it. But there's so much that goes into mm -hmm. it. Like you said, there's mm -hmm. there are things that just, if you look at, Regardless of the, whatever you thought about the movie, it was a movie, right? Facts. <laughs> it, a movie. it was a movie, definitely a movie. But, no, but it was a movie, and people treated it like it was politics, oh, it was like it was war. changing the world, and and that Ryan Johnson was 
in charge of a country that he ruined yes. and went made you know put into poverty and blamed him for it and wanted him fired from his that's my that other we thing had to have like UN summits and it's another stuff, problem yeah. that I have with the Twitter culture in general is that right away if somebody does something in general it's it's a matter of fire them mm-hmm. yeah. fire them get them fired make them fired people have families mm-hmm. people have it's like there are certain circumstances then it's 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 fire them yeah. Kevin Spacey see you later yeah I get it but there's other like we're in a culture it's like fire them get rid of them fire them it's like and they don't think and it's the same thing we were talking about before with with you with the person it's like they're not thinking about the other side it's like does that person does she or he have children do they, it's like right. they just directed a movie and because of that you want their family not to eat because they said something you don't want their you want their kids to not go to school it's 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 really it's it's and but then sometimes there's that switch though christian that's so weird about society also like remember what happened with snyder everybody's fire him fire him fire him mm-hmm. right find out about personal tragedy release the snyder cut we love snyder 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 it's like it's okay to feel one way about his art and and still root for him as a human being on the mm-hmm. planet right like uh, okay, maybe right now is not the right time to be working on this movie, but we wish you all of the best, and we're putting all of the love out there in the world for you. Like, why does it have right. to be? It, it just doesn't make sense to me. I have I have a buddy, and it's in in a similar vein. It has to do with Twitter culture and everything. I have a buddy who's a professional football coach, right? And he has his job called for every day, even yeah. if they win. His what? Say again? His job called for oh, every yeah. single day, yeah. all the yeah. time, no matter where. He's like, I don't go on social media. I never do. Right. But sometimes I listen to talk radio just to see what they do. We actually used to play a really funny game because his dad was a GM of the 76ers at one point. And we were living in Philly. And we'd be like, oh, the Sixers, they're the worst. Yeah. What about that GM? And the Kevin's like, eh, that fucking GM's a real piece of shit. And I'm like, and then Kevin's like, eh, it's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because it doesn't affect, the same thing, it, just, it doesn't affect people to say it because they no. don't think about I guess maybe just being a dad, and it's like totally you know, you're, thinking about, you're thinking about children, you're thinking about stuff too. It's just like you just don't scream for something. Fire him, fire yeah. them, fire her, fire them. It's like mm-hmm. it, this is what people do right away. It's like, especially this. You know how hard it is to direct a movie. If you ever, that's why directors IMDb's may have like thirteen or fourteen credits because directing a movie is so effing hard. It takes up all your time. You are on set eighteen to twenty hours a day. Then you go into post. Then you go into all that. Like, if I learned anything from watching Fosse Verdon, and listen, Bob Fosse was a crazy person. At least in this in this yeah. show was, is that when you go into post and you direct a movie, your entire life is consumed by it. Yep. If you want to turn out a good product, you have to sacrifice just about everything else. And I think a lot of that goes to a lot of different careers. And there's a lot of careers that people get into where they can go home and see their family and they can separate work right. from life. But directing is not one of no. them. Have you seen Fosse Verdon yet? No, I still haven't. Got it. Did yeah. you watch Big Little Eyes yet? Not yet. I haven't. Because oh. uh, last night, my that I, again, because Fleabag. my wife and watched it. The other, no, I didn't watch Fleabag last night. She was watching The Bachelor. Oh, I haven't watched last night. Too. Have any know. of you guys seen Big Brother yet? Or No. I no. watched three minutes of it and said never again. No, wait, tell me more. I just, they were outside. Which three minutes? <laughs> it was... Exactly. Tell me more. I'll tell you that. Exactly. They were out by a jacuzzi, and then someone took someone else into a room, and they were talking about something, and I said, this is just cameras on, like, all day long, and they're not, there's, no, there's no direction no, to this show. That is it's just so false. Sorry. I don't like it. <laughs> Roxy, you, like you are legitimately, it. and when I say legitimately. Don't say the only fan, because Sam Levine is, too. Oh well, that, uh, but I don't know. I didn't know that Sam Levine was. Yes, Sam Levine wanted to be on Celebrity Big yes, Brother. He, he campaigned Badly. for it. Yeah, and also the show's the best. And Sam Levine has impeccable taste. Yeah, I, I couldn't. Okay. I couldn't do it. I was like, I'm watching. I was like, it just. I might as well just put a camera yeah. on whoever and just yeah. follow them around. The, the, the Put the camera in a, in a Starbucks and yep. click on. It's like the Truman Show. Totally. And it's, but it's like, but it's. It, but it's less entertaining. But, right, because the Truman Show, the movie, is two hours. Yes. Yeah. It's I not can't really 24 hours of everybody. This is not unless you're watching Big Brother After Dark. Maybe it's that's what it was. Not 24 hours. I don't know Because we're was. this is edited together into an hour show. Whatever it was, I didn't like it. What do you think Bachelor is? No, no, well, maybe maybe then There's I would watch goal. something else because it's just There's not it. Just clicking between. There's a cameras. goal, of Big Brother too. What, what is, is it? it? Money. Oh well, that's not as fun. As <laughs> uh, People competing for money has love. no love is way more entertaining. Although, I gotta be honest uh, do with you, you know there are more relationships that have worked from Big Brother than The Bachelor? I don't give a shit. More people are married from Big Brother. Uh, Cody, are you Big that's Brother? That's not the fan? point of the show. No, I don't know what the hell is going. On. Oh. <laughs> no, well, that's not. She's that's actually not me. fact anymore. Now that Bachelor in Paradise came out, because it's still part of the franchise, no. and there's a lot of people from Bachelor. Paradise no, so I know. I think it now. is. Mm. You're talking about the original, the, the actual show itself. I saw this this thing you're talking about. Really? Yeah, uh, Bachelor in Paradise has produced way a, a lot of marriages. Yeah, unfortunately. Really? Yeah. More um, than the Big Brother. Big Brother's got like 
like 25. I don't know. Look, look it up. I, I, to be completely honest, I don't know if I care. Yeah, um, I care with my whole heart. You do care. But what I will tell you, the only reason I don't watch The Bachelor anymore, especially after working on it, but I did watch last night, even without my wife, because I wanted to see uh, the f- Luke P just, or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, I just want to see the fights. Wait, so what's happening? Because I, I, saw this me- I saw this gif of Luke P holding Psychopath to the camera. Did you guys see this? Yeah, that was from two episodes. Yeah, oh, no, so somebody called him a Psychopath. No, he's yelling, he's yelling at somebody, so I won't ruin it for you, yeah. but it just, like Hannah B, like I told you, she's she's better than I thought she was going to be, but she's pretty dopey. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Keeping this guy around. Totally, totally. Dopey. It's it's the biggest mistake. Do you know producers telling her to do that? No. Uh, up until a point, I will tell you that it is producers for sure. But but there gets to a point where she and, and they probably see the way that they do it, and people don't know. Maybe they do, they don't. They it, it's one of the reasons why I didn't want to work there anymore. To be honest, is like it's very manipulative. Mm-hmm. Like because. It's not that the producers don't um, become friends with these people. They legit do. Like, mm-hmm. they, they, they absolutely do. But, the, but your job, and I actually had someone say this to me while I was there when I was, because I worked in the post side of it, and I was gonna, they wanted me to start working on the actual floor. Um, and one of the guys, he's no longer, he's no longer there, but he's he, producers, and he said, uh, he said, you can't look at them as people. You've got to look at them as characters. Yeah. And that's hard. It's the tough thing because yeah. that's the show. He's like, you can't look at them as people. You have to look at them as, as characters. Probably uh, it does a better show if you do that. It, it is. It, but I just, I could, I didn't feel right doing that. Like, I, I, I went up making a couple friends from the first thing I was in Bachelor Pad, and I was like, I, and I was, and I never, I just couldn't do that. But uh, anyway, the, the point of that is that they have to do certain things to where they say they know that this Luke P guy is good TV. So they're so then they'll have the conversation. Because the rest of the guys, I some of the guys, even in the first three, usually by the third episode, I pretty much know every know a character's name. Yeah. By the fifth episode, I had no idea who some of these guys' no, names were. Luke Pizzo. So, but if you're the Bachelorette and I'm having a conversation, and you're like, I'm on the ropes with this guy. I think he's really you should attractive. audition. I've been thinking about it. I could get you an audition. You think I would be good? Yes. Yes. Just because, but then my whole career would be screwed because I'd have to put it on hold. But it'd be so fun. If you mm-hmm. legit, if you legit want to meet, I can it. make a phone call. Uh, I've. I don't know. It, it sounds stupid, but I just kind of looking for fun. Like that, a lot of, and I'll tell you that a lot of people go into it that way, and then they re, they they wind up one of two things. They, they find love. They either they do that. They find they me. find new friends, and a lot of people have said that yeah. and they wind up doing it. But that's a conversation off air that okay. we can definitely have if that's something you're interested in. But do let's it. say you're the Bachelorette. Right? Would and you guys root for me? Yes. Oh, no. 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 I would root for Alexi T from Ver- right. Birmingham. Come on. But the point is, if you're having this conversation, you're like, I have doubts about Luke P. And I know my bosses are telling me we got to keep this motherfucker around. Right. And I'm your handler. I'm the one that's, that's I'm like, well, what do you like about him? Like this. And then I start going into the yeah. positives oh, of it. Boy. And I'm like, well, look, if you think that there's a shot, then keep then then have a couple conversations with him, and if you have the, if you think it's the right conversation, I would say give him a rose one more time, and let's see what happens. Wait, but this is different than the real world that where they don't communicate with you. So you guys are actually talking to them throughout the, the produce, whole time. The producer they they have certain producers that, that that are on with them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So and they have those, and and it's like you know legit when I have those things, but it's and the other thing is we can't have this guy in here anymore. You know, talk talk to her, see how she's feeling about it. And I'm like, do you really like this guy? Like I don't know. He seems what would like make a, it so you couldn't have somebody in there anymore? I don't know if, if he was boring. Oh. If he was, you know, maybe there was something. It's like, you know, do you think it's there? You start to have the conversation. But not if he's a horrible person. It depends. What's the rate? It's what's the ratings? This mm-hmm. Luke P guy is the only thing I'm I mean, talking about. What's her face was uh, went to hometowns in the one uh, the girl that was so dumb. Dude, uh, Vienna won it, and back in 2010, this she, she was the only villain that's ever won the show. Yeah, she won yeah. it. And like, what's still the other? Camille. What's, uh, no, they broke up like a, six months later. And he was he was a lunatic. Who, also. Uh, who from Bachelor is still together? Tristan Ryan. Yeah, there's, I, I, there's been a ton over the last couple seasons that I don't remember. Jared and Ashley's best friends met on the Bachelor yeah. and are still married. But that was Thank Bachelor. Uh, no, it's like Bachelor from Paradise. Bachelor. Yeah, there, yeah. There, there 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 are quite a few. Or Bachelorette. But there's yeah. a lot. Really? There, yeah, there's quite a few. I don't remember any of their names. You can, um, you can Wikipedia, and yeah. then Alex can get lost in it and click the wrong link. Well, we got lost hey, in that Alex. conversation. So let's. Uh, so some other stories. Well, what's, what's our main topic? Let's make sure we do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we do have a the announcement from the Gremlins animated TV prequel, and it's going to Warner Media streaming service. Okay. When is that happening? That Warner Media service. We have no idea. We don't know. We still okay. don't know. Yes. Play the music. I always think about Unleash the Trolls. And right? we do. I know, right? We got to do that again. Uh, and we have uh, plot details as well. In the animated television adaptation, we're traveling back to 1920s Shanghai to reveal the story of how 10-year-old Sam Wing, 
the future shop owner, Mr. Wing, in the 1984 movie, met the young mogwai called Gizmo along with a teenage street thief named Ellie. Sam and Gizmo take a perilous journey through the Chinese countryside encountering and sometimes battling colorful monsters and spirits from Chinese folklore. (laughs) Josh McCuga has been out on yeah. this for a well, little bit. The second it's an animated. Yeah. Done, done. On their quest to Not return me, Gizmo. I want to yeah, I want to see do? it. Yeah. You would watch the show. Yeah, I'd be, I mean, you would get Warner Media no. to watch the show. No. Okay. No. That's my problem with this. Yeah. You have to pay for it. But think about when Disney Plus made their announcement. Think about what shows they came out with. Right. And Warner Media is like, no worries. We're going to have a Gremlin animated show. Join us now. Yeah. Uh. Right, and what was the other show? What was the other show that they just sold to Netflix yesterday? Oh yeah, the uh, the Sandman. 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 Man. What do you announce? Played by Adam Sandler. Sandler. That's Sandman. what I'm saying. On I just Did you I, see I that? think that they have, and you guys know I'm a die. I'm a huge Warner Brothers fan, and right. I'm a, a massive DC fan. But they've botched this because putting out the DC app. And then doing this Warner Brothers thing and and not having like what are the what? big shows should be announced right. first? You're announcing a Gremlins animated show that some people might want to see if they why already not, have it. Why not, not do a, why not do but a, you're not going to get the app for yeah, it? But why not do like a, instead of going off the young adult kind of CW shows that they do? Why not do like a like an, a legit series of like uh, Deathstroke, Deathstroke, yeah, Deathstroke yeah, or something? Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like the, like Sandman. Yeah, yeah, but, but nobody Sandman, knows but, who Sandman but no one, is. Well, that's kind of my point. Like more, you, you think just, more people know who Deathstroke is? Yes. Yeah. I think because he's been in the the, the CW shows yeah, or okay. things, uh, or even or maybe when you, you say more, Sandman, I think of Adam friggin' Sandler. Do you know Swamp Thing more than you know Sandman? Yes. Oh. I think. See, when I think of Sandman comic book, I think of the Spider-Man Sandman. Oh, that too. That's the one that I think. Thomas Aiden Church. Yeah, but I just think that there's Great a lot of there's so Good many properties, pull. and easily DC has. I don't think anybody's going to argue. DC is the best villains ever. Ever mm-hmm. is that I would want us, and because of what Warner could do, it's start playing off of that that DC. You guys have Harry Potter right. and DC, right? Do a Harry and you're Potter announcing series. a Gremlins right. animated show, right? Which is fine if it's on the net, but like, you this is the time to play with the big kids, right? Yeah, and you and and are they? Did you say they are going to put Friends on there? Because I, I, I remember what, what well, it was. They said that a while ago that Friends, Friends was Warner getting Brothers, taken not NBC, off. By the way, not, I know you know that. Yeah, yeah, but Friends was getting taken off. But that doesn't mean that NBC couldn't buy it and put it sure. there. I don't know what they're because clearly Warner Brothers are not keeping all of their properties as their. Uh, it makes no sense. So I don't know where no. Friends is going, but we did hear that Friends was leaving Netflix. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Got something. Well, no, I was. I was just going to say. That you, I, I lost it. Right. I lost it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, just fr- I'm it. frustrated I because they have such amazing things to work with, right. and they're divvying them up amongst all the other networks, and then announcing Gremlins. Right. You know yeah. what? I was Which is bring fine, up. but what? Was that what they haven't announced yet? Which is kind of bullshit. And I think you're going to go with me here. Oh yeah. Kite Man and Condiment King. Yeah. No series. I'm down. No series. They're keeping that one close to the vest. Oh. Yeah, it'd be a good comic. You know, you have Jonah Hill and uh, Seth Rogen yeah. voice both those characters. Totally. Perfect. Was it, did you guys just say, is it Dune that's going to be on the Warner Warner Media one? It's, oh, no, Dune's is it? Netflix. Is or Dune Amazon. Netflix? Amazon or Netflix. It's not Warner Brothers. See, that's, it's coming out. Like, yeah, there's, there's nothing There's on nothing that. yet on the Warner series that makes me say, like, I... I oh, so gotta Warner, watch it! Warner, Warner Media streaming service likely to cost 16 to $17 <laughs> a month. Oh, but you but you bundle HBO <clears throat> and Cinemax together. That's good. It. And I'll take yeah, that. That'll yeah, yeah, take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's what people forget, is that Warner also owns HBO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I pay 15 bucks for just, HBO, yeah, so that's, a that's, buck more? That's, yeah. that's, a, that's a good deal. I, if it's true... Okay. For and for how long? I I just think put out uh, put out a massive show. Say by the way, this is what we're we're going to be doing the first Harry Potter series. Right. That would blow up. Uh, yeah. That would blow up. Yeah. I don't know why they didn't. Well, it, I get nervous though with Harry Potter now because with Fantastic Beasts. And I like those. I'm the only person that likes both of those movies. Um, second movie. What's what's his I, thing I, called? I that literally he wants think to be? I'm, I think I'm the only person that likes the second movie. The, I, the I second liked movie. it enough that it just kind of. Oh, yeah, Perry hated it. No, no, he was. What was Harry's job? He's he was a minister of magic. At, what was his no. job? Uh, when he's Aurora. older. Oh, Aurora. 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 But. Aurora. At the end of it, you, well, if you did a, if you did, first of all, if you were able to do a Harry Potter series with Daniel Radcliffe, I mean, oh, see you later. Next level. Well, what, well, is, what is he doing? You would probably just he's, he's, he doesn't, he doesn't want to go he back to Harry Potter. He was doing a series Potter. on what's that? It was like with Steve Buscemi. Oh yeah, God. Uh, God and, somebody called God or something. Yeah, and yeah. which I was surprised that 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 was it's a actually pretty entertaining TV show. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty entertaining. Yeah, what's he what's he working on right now? So let's see. 
Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's doing all these uh, he does these smaller room. movies. Uh, he likes to likes to challenge himself. You think we're ever going to get a, another Harry Broadway. Potter movie that picks up later? I think. I they mean, there's will. that there's that book. You know, it's a screenplay, basically. The what's the, it the called? play, the, yeah. the Cursed Child. Cursed Child. My daughter just read that too. She, yeah. she read every single Harry Potter. Book. She's awesome. seven. She I mean, I think one. they could adapt that, but I mean, I think because of Fantastic Beasts, like J.K. Rowling, and it's it's like what they did with Star Wars. It's yeah. like all of a sudden they're going to announce twenty years later Harry Potter. What's yeah. going on with his life? I'm not even saying it has to be Daniel Radcliffe. No, but in any, world. any kind of series there because. Yeah. I get why they can't touch DC right now because of the DC streaming service, but right. you guys have a massive But aren't they property. shutting down that DC service and they shutting that down? Uh, rumors, nothing we yet. We don't know. Because no. that Swamp thing, that's so random that they oh, had bye. one episode and it was canceled and there was some like, and paperwork still airing, issue. And and it's great. No, yeah, it wasn't, and though. It, it they wasn't? Said, no, they came out and said it was taxes and then the, the city was like, uh, no, it's not. And, oh. then, and then they said, uh, uh, okay, it is something else, but we're not telling you. Yeah. Well, why... It's literally did they, they pretty much fire a the showrunners like halfway through, and they cancel, cut it down. People love the show, right? It's yeah, so good. Yeah, what Doctor Who? Good uh, things. Swamp 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 Swamp. Doom Patrol. So I, I, Doom I've Patrol heard is great as well. I yeah. can't wait till you can watch. I'm gonna watch. It's it. so Again, good. The Blu-ray sent to me. I'm gonna be watching. It's weird this. and great. Yeah, I'm gonna watch. So this. good. I hear great things about it. I just started watching a show that I'm not allowed to talk about. Oh, tell me about what is awesome. Yeah, what is it? We're not live right now. Do I? Yeah. So do you? Sounds good. You saw me watch it the other day. Oh. Ah. No. All right. We'll figure that out. Stranger so. Things? No. No. Um, I want to move on because it's yeah. still st- staying in this realm of the 80s kind of reboots here because RoboCop. Tell me about RoboCop. What's RoboCop. So we got an update script, from right? the script is almost finished. Neil Blomkamp has taken to Twitter and given an update. And he also revealed that it's – he said it's like Paul Verhoeven coming back and directing the second movie. That. That's what he's, he's, he's having a good that. time and that – the suit is not going to be upgraded. It's not. It's going to be the suit. original Great. clunky Great. suit coming back, so you get that look. <laughs> Almost like it feels like he's like RoboCop hasn't stopped patrolling for like however many years. Ooh, and here good. he is. See, listen, man, this is a great tweet. The script is being written, going well, and imagine watching Verhoeven do a follow-up film. I mean, that to me, that, that's that's great. And you because you're basically doing what he was going to do with Aliens, right? Because it was supposed to be Aliens and then and shit. And shit. And then it was going to be Bloom Camp's version right after that. Right. Because they were going to get rid of Alien 3. Uh, and, and so it looks and like, Alien 4 looks and like they're that. getting rid of Robocop 2 and 3. And it's just yep. going to continue right on from Robocop 1, which, and what Halloween just did, mm-hmm. right? So but they kept one and two. They kept one. No, no, it was just one. Yeah, really? just yeah, one. It was just one, and then it dra- and then the there was a rumor at first it was going to be one and two, oh. but then yeah. they changed that. Yeah, because I think in the they second were... one it's revealed that they're brothers. They're brothers. Yeah, yeah. That's they not got rid of that. Was the that. second one? Yeah, yep. the second one. Oh, so it, so as a reason count. why Michael is going after yeah, Laurie yeah, Strode, yeah. she's not. She's not his. I sister. honestly can't remember which was which. Right, but now you only now you only have to remember now you only have to remember two. Now, if you want to follow that canon, but this canon you're going to have. And now, who's going to play Robocop? Did they announce that yet? No. I had that, we were t- with Devin, John actually. Cena. We were talking about that. <laughs> John, John Cena. Like, that could they bring back, bring back Peter Weller just because it's this and it's a stunt guy and they can use some effects? Are they going to do a, a another actor? Who, who's your dream casting? I'd want to bring back Carl Peter Urban. Weller. I wouldn't. He's too easy. Denzel Washington. <laughs> yeah. Denzel. Maybe his voice Maybe and his some, yeah, some yeah, mocap or something. Yeah, it's too tricky then. I, the, pro- the problem with Peter Weller is even when I, when I had the pleasure of talking with um, with Clarence Boddicker himself. Oh, yeah. Um, when, when we talked, he told me that Peter Weller had – he was like 30, in his 30s. And yeah. it, was, it was exhausting mm-hmm. being in that thing. Yeah. He's got to be 64 years old. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Now, you don't put him in the suit. Right. Um, you know, and I don't Work face. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why. I just just put somebody else in. The Henry suit. Cavill would have a good too RoboCop big. face. Oh, too, you think too big? He's too big. Like the, 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 I thought, what would made RoboCop so special was that he was just an, like an average dude and who was put into this machine. Like you Matt were, Bomer. Matt Bomer would be everyone pitched Matt, Matt Bomer for everything. Yeah, but, he, but, but he would be all right. He would be okay. He's so great. I'll tell you who I would love in it. Marsden. And this is the one I always throw out there too. Fastbender would be great. Yeah. Oh. That's a great call. Fastbender. Yeah. Who is the female version of Fastbender or Matt Bomer? Jessica like the name Chastain. that always gets thrown out for everything. Kate Blanchett, Jessica Chastain. Chastain. Yeah, no, those two are too one. big. Yeah. Um, oh, you mean Alicia Vikander? Yeah. yeah. yeah that was a mm-hmm. good one. I brought it up. Yeah, Alicia yeah. Yeah, Vikander. She's, what is she? She was having that run where she was in everything. Jennifer Lawrence. She was. Really, I was going to bring her. She's too big, right? But Alicia Vikander, 
is she's she's, she's Jessica she's, Biel never gets put in anything. I'd like to see her in more stuff. She Except the last so, thing you saw her in. Sinner. The Sinner. She was oh, so good in that movie. Who was in, in the show. show that you hate? That you and Thad hate watched? Both of you guys? Oh, uh, Kate Beckinsale. Oh, oh Kate yeah, Beckinsale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the hottest woman on the planet in the most ridiculous show of all time. <laughs> I was still dating Pete uh, Davidson. And I haven't seen anything in a while. Must Google right I don't know. Now. Should I text him? Yeah, yeah text, text, Pete, text Davidson. Pete Davidson. Hey, Pete, if you're watching, could no, you call Ra- in? Riley, no text chance. her. I feel like she'll give a more honest yeah. answer about this Okay, one. hold on. Let me get you. Thanks, cool. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I can't imagine those two are still together. Why not? They split. Yeah, look at that. And then what was that? That was April. They broke up in April. <laughs> it was a quick. It was, yeah, I think it was it's easier or months. harder to date as a celebrity. Harder. Depends. Depends on what. Well, it depends. It depends on what kind of uh, what kind of spotlight. You know, when it comes yeah. to like these two, or, or uh, that was a, that was a publicity stunt. Sure. Um, what, that that's it's only gonna last for, for that long. But uh, you know, there are other people who've done well, it. Pete Davidson and Kate Beckinsale split after nearly four months. Yeah, four months isn't. I mean, I guess maybe in, in celebrity, celebrity terms, it's world. a long time. Yeah. But yeah, that's a full marriage in yeah. celebrity terms. Four months. I feel like you're you actually dated somebody. Okay. Yeah, I give you yeah. four months. Right? I think like four. I wouldn't say like it was the love of your life, but like, oh, did yeah. you date him? Yeah. yeah. Four months before me, no, it was like the longest include, relationship I, I had. Two and a half. There it is. Yeah. In there too. Yeah. yeah. Not include two. Two, Dude, months. if I was dating you for seeing, two months, that's, seeing, that is, I mean, that's exclusive. If you're seeing them, it depends, though. It depends on how often you see that person. If you're yeah. if you're dating someone for like two months and you see him like twice, what yeah. about once a week? Yeah. Uh, Maybe, but like, I mean, for example, I've dated I dated someone for like two, a little over two months, but I saw the person every day for like two months, and then it was like, no, we're done. Um, but mm, did you poop in the public? Yeah, that's why I see this poop in the public. Poop in the public. Poop in the public. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I love it. It's really good. Anyway, so, so good. RoboCop. Are we excited about this movie? Hell yes. I'm very excited. I haven't watched RoboCop since the first one, and I probably am not going to get excited for another one. I think. Wait Bloom- a minute. You're, you're, are you a fan of the original? Yeah, sure. Uh, not really. Nah, that's not. I a think fan. Bloom yeah. Camp, I think Bloom Camp right. needs. He needs a hit. This is a yeah. good. The reason why I'm excited for him doing this is because he was a guy that I want to see him do another project that is not one of his own. Because I think he was getting too. Chubby. Caught, but he was he was getting too caught up in his like. I get having a message film. I get it. A lot of, that's why a lot of these guys want to and, and women want to do these movies to make sure that they have they can have a narrative, have their voice. But District Nine, I thought, was a perfect blend yeah. of telling a story, having a message, Ugh. and putting it together. District right? Nine is one of the most I I love District Nine. District great. Nine is it's is great. so good. Yeah, and I Elysium. Loved Elysium. I so, loved it. But this is that the Will Smith one? No, no it's, Matt, it's Damon. Uh, Matt Damon. Oh, Matt Damon. I feel I like you're pronouncing it strange. Elysium. 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 Either way, I don't know. District Elysium. District Nine. Y'all knew. Yeah, District Nine, Nine was was fi- like to me it was fifty fifty message, fifty fifty movie in a story. Right. Mm-hmm. Elysium was about. 60 40 mm-hmm. message okay. message right. heavier yeah. i didn't love i didn't love elysium as much as like you and ellis did right yeah Chappie. something about you guys continue to say that word is like like flipping well don't worry out. we're, we're, we're changing it now because now chappy because chappy okay. stinks yeah chappy was nah. chappy, i didn't see chappy, chappy stinks now chappy wasn't blum camp using his twitter again i don't know if you can find it there but he put a poll out district 10 or robocop 2 or something like that and what and, would we want yeah, what would people want? Well, I mean, that, that, yeah, how, how, oh, you mean his RoboCop he, too? He, yeah, his own stuff. I think I, you know, it's funny. But I that's love a, District Nine. I would take RoboCop. I, I think his, I think his version of RoboCop is going to be really cool. Because, yeah, and it's going off my point. I want to see him do something like off of an IP that is already there, but take his spin on it. Mm. Because do you think it's okay for creators to make decisions that way? What do you mean? How so? Taking a poll? Yeah. Oh, why not? Well, he wants to talk to his audience. That's fair. Yeah, that's if, if, if he. Test the temperature. Yeah. I see where you're going with that question, but I, I, I dangerous. Just, yeah, I slightly don't concerning. Mind. Yeah, I, like if I was a studio head, I'd be like, "Yo, bro, yeah. we signed you on for RoboCop, yeah, dude." Yeah. Right. Uh, right. Okay. Well, maybe he just goes in, but, but that's data, right? If he yeah. if he goes in, he says, "Listen, I did a poll of that. I don't know, you know, my the audience that follows me, eighty five percent of them said they wanted to see uh, RoboCop." So how, I mean, what do you think? There's how many votes on that poll? I don't know. Is there a poll? Is, we, I'm sure Is you can there. See it. Can we find it? No. You know who's right, going to be RoboCop? Who? Charlotte Copley. That's very possible. That's yeah. who it's going to be. You're, you're probably right. That would be you're perfect. Right. And that would be the, perfect. That would be okay. That's, you're probably right. And it, uh, that would be, uh, or he'd be the villain. Chateau. Yeah. Or he'd be the villain. Because he's done a movie. What was the one he did with in the... In the 18. Uh, no, 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 no. He was. Uh, he, he did that movie in the, in the, the th- third person. Oh, uh, the uh, Hardcore Henry. 
Hardcore, Hardcore Henry. Henry. Never yeah. saw I dug that movie. Hey, man. Yeah. Good. What, what do you mean you did it in the How third? How am I the 22nd the, the, the rank competitor was in, a, it was in, in that uh, style? Uh, what's How? That? How are you what? 22nd rank competitor. Yeah, yeah. he just pulled Hardcore oh, yeah. Henry out there. I know. Well, we'll see what happens. Hardcore Henry, did you ever see it? It's no, great. I never saw it. I dug it. Yeah. it was a little I watched bit. some of it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you were watching a video game. Totally. Yeah. yeah. The whole time. Dug it. All right. So anyway, how about you guys? Do you want to see Robocop, the new one, or do you want to see him do uh, District 10? Which one do you think? I, I, I would probably guess that most people would say District 10 because let's do something original. That's probably what it would, would the argument would be, but I want to no, see I what his version. Say Robocop. You think so? Yeah. I think a lot of people would say District 10. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, anyway, let's let's move on. What's next? All right, we have some more Little Mermaid casting news. Yes. Uh, Aquafina and Jacob Tremblay are all are both in talks now. Aquafina is going to do s- the voice of Scuttle, uh, the, the bird, s- right? The, the bird, bird. and Jacob Tremblay is going to do Flounder, which is perfect. Ah, Flounder, both of those too. Both of those are really good. Yeah, yeah, so they're casting up on this thing. So this thing's happening soon. I am the soon. crab. Yeah, when are they, when are they looking to? Really doesn't say. say. It's, it's it's be, doesn't, it's I think there's a release date set. Yeah. 21 or 2, probably. Well, you're going to probably hear a shit ton about this now at D23, right? I am the crap. Yes. yes. 2021 is Dude, they're about. totally getting that ready. So they're going to bring everybody up on stage, yeah. probably, and, and the, probably announce the aerial there. Think you know so? what I mean? I think, think that would be a be big. Jessica Chastain. <laughs> right. Way too old. Too old. Uh, Emma Stone. Bryce Dallas Howard. Emma Stone. I think, it, I think it's Zendaya. going to be Zendaya. God yeah. Oh. I do think so. John Cena. <laughs> That's good. Um, I, uh, John Cena is going to play King Triton. No. No? No, probably not. Triton. No, just going back for a second because uh-huh. I just wanted to make sure that I. Did you guys say flou- flounder? Yeah. 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 That's the fish, right? Eh? D- yeah. yeah. Did you guys say flounder was the bird? No. no scuttle's, no, scuttles oh, the bird. Oh, scuttles my, the... my brain wasn't working quick enough to get there, and I was like, wait, what? And yeah. then no, I... scuttle's the bird, and then flounder's, flounder's the fish. Flounder's the fish. Yeah. So who plays King, King Triton? Is that, um... Don <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't know. There's still got to be Jack. Maybe The Rock plays King Triton, or is he Maybe. Maui? He, well, he's in Maui. What's going on with Maui? We, we looked at it once. We never You're saw welcome. any deal with Maui, too. That's why it's this not, is going to be Moana. Lana. It's not called Maui. That's Moana, Moana, too. Moana, too. Maybe it is called Maui. Maui, too. Maui, too. Mo- Moana. My, yeah, I like that Moana. My little niece. I Moana's love Moana. fantastic. Yes. What? I Moana? love Moana. So good. Moana's great. I've really good. been. My uh, little niece yeah, only song. wore a Moana dress for like six months. Oh, My so. brother's like, he tried. they tried to take it off. She screamed. Yeah, makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> hey, you don't want to piss those kids off, no. man. I'm telling you. I told I you what happened when we turned, we turned off uh-huh. the... Uh, and that's another thing HBO has that we haven't talked about, by the way. Sesame Street. Yeah. Like, that's a big property that they have. No one, like, it's, They're making a movie. Are they making a Sesame They're Street movie? Anne Hathaway. Is it going to be As in the big theater? Bear? What? No, Anne Hathaway is a part of it, and it's like Sesame Street. They get they. I was on Movie Talk, and we talked about this. Oh my god! They get evicted literally from Sesame Street. No way! Is it and a, so a it's like a, it's because Anne Hathaway. Yeah, gets theater. In trouble. Oh my god! I got. I mean, that, I already know my my daughter's first movie. It is great, and they question their existence, and it's like you know, because Sesame Street, and where do they go? And Anne Hathaway comes but, in. Bo Burnham's doing. Bo it? Bo Burnham, yes. Wow. Bo Burnham is writing music for this thing. That's great. Twenty twenty one. I effing love him. Oh, it's gonna yes. be a while. Be Eighth a while grade was good. It comes out. Was no easy day, but it was good. It's a year and a half before that movie comes out. But uh, yeah, my, I'm obsessed. My my little one is with uh, Sesame Street. Oh yeah, of course. Of course. It's a good age to go to your first movie. This would be three two. and a half. Well, yeah, easily. I took I took my oldest. Her first movie she ever saw was Frozen in the theater. She was two. Oh, is your youngest gonna go to Frozen too? Probably not. I don't know yet. Well, what I'm gonna the take deuce? her to see. The deuce know, looks yeah. a little tough. It looks, it looks a, little, a little scary, scary a little yeah, spooky. Little I scary. know my little niece was a little scared of yeah. Pikachu. Did that get Pikachu? Mm-hmm. But um, ten minutes. Isn't left. that good though? What? That they're scared of Pikachu? Aren't you supposed to introduce them to things that they are afraid of? No, I don't not. Know. Nah, I don't want to scare. Like you. clowns. Not, not, they're not ready. Not, not oh. if they're not ready yet. Clearly, I got introduced to things that scared me way too early because I'm still scared. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It, <laughs> it does though. I, yeah. I don't know. I feel like that's helpful. You I'm have kids. Have some kids. Uh, yeah, what's next? yeah, I should do that. You're right. <laughs> I am the crap. Test out all your theories. Yeah. Let them shit on the floor. You know. <laughs> Will you be my birthing doula? Uh, no, because that's not what 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 we do. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I guess you can be. I don't know what the fuck do I know. What do you, I that? am the crab. <laughs> Sorry, that's, what's next? Love what you say. Let's stay under the sea. Uh, Aquaman two. 
I knew that. Is <laughs> not going to be James Wan's next movie. Okay. What a wonderful we, thing to hear. What a wonderful. <laughs> thing. He oh, says, that guy, "That's my time here. I'm glad I He was speaking with Cinema Blend, yeah. and he said, "I think I kind of know what I want to direct next. next. It won't be Aquaman two just yet. Yeah. I have something else I'm cooking up." Yeah, people, people ran with that headline as though he's not doing it. As like, yeah, he's, he's, he's going to come back. But he's going to do one for him. The next movie's not coming out for like, like three or four years. Yeah. Three years from yeah. now. Yeah. And he wants the script to be good, so yeah. he's probably giving it time. And meanwhile, he's going to go. Probably, I would love for him to come back. I could do like another scary But movie. did he think the first script was good? I think a lot of people did. Uh, the movie made, I am the crab. <laughs> the movie made, the movie made, That's so true about it. Um, <laughs> anyway, so... It made a billion dollars. It almost oh, made a crap. Dollars. Yeah, a lot of people went and saw it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really get it because it was like, William Dafoe looks weird under the water with a slick back here. Yeah, it was because he was... He washed the... <laughs> Do the gel out. Oh, you put too much gel in. <laughs> I love it. All right. Uh, is, is there, Roxy just clams up. Is there anything hey, else? I'm not a clammed pun. up. But I, here's, uh, here's what I was thinking. I was thinking, you know, Christian didn't chime in on that one either. I was listening. I was listening. Yeah. yeah. I am the I, Well, you also don't want, you don't want to just throw them off. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I'm glad we're all you know on the I'm same gonna, page. Not, not, you're not going to go me into this. Uh-huh. Not doing it. Boy, I okay. sure like when Christian makes James Bond jokes. Do it. Oh. Yeah. Do, 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 I Christian does not. He do, does do, not do, do know. So with Will and the Foe underwater, because he was he drinking all of it, or is he like? You have never once heard me make a breath during so that. So there was uh, the point where Josh Lucas. I don't his do hair what you're doing. Yeah. I, it's, uh, that's do ludicrous. I don't do what you're doing. I keep talking. Cody Hall. Cody Hall. What? This is what I do. <laughs> That's has, there, has there ever been a little bit more dramatic than that? Yes. Oh, during Rocky uh, Five. And a lot of I others. Would say a lot. No, I literally sit here and I go. <laughs> uh, which yeah. is which is you never the face in, you of, never looked into the camera. Which is oh, the, I do that. That is. <laughs> but that, that's me right. playing along with the bit. Oh, okay. oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> I am just crab. The crabs are uh, they're the ones that eat all the like plankton. Oh, they like, get in there with their little claws and they crank it up. <laughs> they do the thing with the... I can't. No, I don't like Oh, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, God. fucking God. hell, man. All right. Look, uh, is there anything else the crab. news-wise? We there? got the news, all that's of it. it. That's everything. Wow. I, don't, I, I think that's false. Well, I don't think that's true. I think this. Mel, do you want to talk about the Academy adding 842 new members? No, but what's this thing about the mom catching the kid? Yes, let's go to that. Uh, so it's one of those things. Hey, look, man. they got crabs on the screen. It's you one of those crabs. things. Crab. I'll set it up for you. It's like a, a the high rise building, apartment complex, something like that. Uh, banisters, right, mother and, oh. and son. Oh. They got what? rid of it. That happens all the time with bar stool. Uh, you, can probably, you can probably find it again. The, the mom caught the crab. Why does bar stool shit always get taken down? I don't know. They, they don't get permission to post no, it, and then it. when yeah, and then when somebody calls and they them get back, more views. Well, yeah. yeah, that's because they get more views than the actual clip itself. Yeah. And people go, "Fuck you! I want to get it for myself." You know, is, there it is. is that's that it? it. All right, let's see. Oh. All right. No, that's just, just a still. Just oh. an image. But she, uh, she's see how the kid's oh, falling the kid, and yeah. she's jumping. She literally jumps. How old was the kid? Yeah, but why was the kid yeah, falling? It was like taller, toddler. How do you just fall? No, the kid was like wandering yeah. and she's doing something and then she oh. turns yeah, just as he falls. The angle. What? Can we, yeah, Alex? See if you can find the actual video on Google. Um, yeah, it was two crazy. years ago. But so is that the actual video? Oh, it's still. No, she's, no he's looking. He's looking for it. Okay, cool. Um, so this morning, speaking of which. So my, my you went to I crap. call her. No, Speaking of which, what? I call her like a two. She's like a two-year-old, right? Yeah. So she, my the youngest. She's on this uh, on this bike, this little car that she has, and she's right. She's riding on it, and I'm a l- I'm kind of like where I am from you, right? Mm-hmm. And I see her like starting to. She's gonna fall bad, mm-hmm. and I'm like I. I'm not gonna be able to reach her, right? I'm like, shit, this is gonna be a really bad fall. You it's all see slow it. motion happening. Yeah, and she does this move where she turns her arm <laughs> around and she puts her arm behind her back and braces herself, spins it around. I'm like, she's not gonna land on her head. She, I don't, how is she doing this? <laughs> and she and she let she just scrapes herself barely, startles it. But it was a move, dude. I was like, I was like, I'm gonna Matrix. get you. In, I'm getting you in sports gymnastics. Game. Yeah, do it. Yeah, I mean, she, it was like that, it was a move that like yeah. she should have eaten shit. Like yeah. she, I mean, it, it, it was it was a. I wish I had video. All right, here it is. Hair raising video of mom saving her son falling off a building. All right, so, so what, what does she do? She lets him go for a second? Yeah. All right, so she lets him go. She's on the phone. No, she's not on the phone. Oh, yeah. 
So there he goes. He's, he's going towards the edge. Oh, see, that railing wasn't yeah. correctly. So what's, but what's he just going to jump? Oh, no. He thought it was a window. Oh, my God. How far off is that? <laughs> oh, my oh. God. Oh, my God. With the cell phone in the hand. And the guy with the helmet goes down. Dude. Right? Wow. Yeah. Mom of the that, year. She that just, was like did she get up? that much room oh, falls to them. for error. Oh, my God. Dude, she. Holy oh my God. moly. So Why didn't the guy happen. go help her? He did. He went. To, he, <laughs> did you just hear Cody? What? So these things just happen because he's about to have a kid. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so wait, I got to keep my eye on him all on the time. All time. Hey, what a moron <laughs> kid. Well, he thought it was like a window. The kid, like, they're the kids. kids. It's two and a half years old. No, he didn't thought it was a window. He thought it was a window there. And he was I like, stuck you, my hand in a fire know? when I was that age. You, you can know? tell. Because it happens. Uh, window, Roxy, look, this look he doesn't know. Look, he's looking. He's, he, just, he doesn't know. Look at the poor kid. He's, he thinks, yeah, he thinks there's a window. He puts his hands there to hold himself. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, yeah. I get what's happening now. Oh, God, that woman. Thank you. Wait, is that a staircase or that's a. No, so the staircase goes around. It goes around the elevator. And that guy ran downstairs to go catch him. Yeah. I wonder how high up it is. I, I, I would have. Yeah, but don't you think that guy should have gone over to the woman and helped feet. pull up the kid? No, because I think he, he was going to try to catch. I think him he thought the kid fell. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. So okay, two all right. Ago, I'm with you guys now. When, I'm with when you. was that? Two years ago. F- uh, this was real recent. June 28th. Yeah. Oh, good. yeah. God, thank God that kids aren't. Oh, so God. last right? two years ago, my little niece. She's not even <sighs> one yet, yeah. right? And. Uh, or maybe she just turned one, something, whatever the case may be. And we have a back stairwell at our house in Pittsburgh, and it's just a straight stairwell down. Now, granted, the, the carpeting is very soft. Yeah. We didn't have the gate up. My sister-in-law had just taken the gate down so she could climb over and then take Jenny down. And Jenny was there, and my sister-in-law turns around, and Jenny's at the top of the stairs and just takes a header yeah. off it and falls down wow. to like three stairs and my sister-in-law grabbed her by the arm like after four stairs and like I mean if she hadn't she would have no. rolled straight down into a, like an old sewing machine Dude, I mean kids? this is that's horrifyingly scary yeah like yeah. you could be doing like she wasn't I can still doing hear anything the wrong scream she was just like of my sister-in-law. hanging and then your kid almost dies no because you're, cause she's not paying attention to the fact that that thing that thing should have been guarded better right yeah, and like totally. she's not paying attention to that she, and then the kid goes to push it oh my god but I mean I ha- I didn't have anything close to that but like holy when, crap my my, my yeah, yeah. Well, no, yeah. So my daughter was like, she knows how to swim now, but she didn't. And we went to Florida, and I think I've told this story once before. And we're in like I had my I had everything on my my well it was it was my shirt sure. and my my bathing suit, but I hadn't wasn't we prepared yeah. to go in. I had my wallet in there and my key my phone. Yeah. And so my daughter, I guess at the time is maybe it was th- th- oh shit three years because she's like about four, okay, three and a half, and she just this is pool. She just jumps in the pool. So I can't swim. And just jumps in like like we and I, and I jump in there with my phone in my hand oh my and everything God. too. And I pick her up and I was like, she'd never done anything like that before. And like if I if I would have and I because I turned my head and that's when I, when I turned that's back. That's why they I put those fences up around pools. And now. I see her jump. But this was like a, a, like a hotel. Pool, yeah, yeah. And she jumped in the deep end and I was like, Dude. oh God. And I was like, I, I was it was crazy. And we still she still remembers it now. Like right at we swimming class the second we got yeah. back. But it was it was. Like that yeah. kind of yeah, shit. You gotta be freaky. Because I was right with her. I was, and I turned away for you, like a but second. But you get like an extra couple of seconds because water. Like this woman, right. if she doesn't grab her, the Done. kid's dead. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. oh. Yeah. I thought that oh that was God, a staircase crazy. and the kid was diving onto the stairs. No, no, so no, I was no, like, no. I don't understand. No, like railing, but that, yeah, anyway, like that's a drop. That was crazy. Good call. Let's stop talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hashtag that is the show. Remember, guys, one more time tomorrow. Uh, be on your toes, Cody. Be on your toes. Tomorrow, one hour show. From 10 to 11. Yep. And then we're going to do our pre tape because we will have a show on Friday. No show on Thursday because of July 4th. Make sure you watch that episode of Comic Book Shopping with Jake Gyllenhaal. It's up on the main channel. Subscribe to this channel, do the podcast, all that. Comic Con, July 20th. Mike Kalinowski trying to get his title back from the reigning Inner Geekdom champion, Rachel the Crusher Cushing, July 20th. The Schmodownlive.com. Get your tickets today. New York, also on sale for August 31st. We'll see you tomorrow.